Bienvenue, it's time for a barn raising, episode 323 of the Armist Inquisition <laughs> on Easter Sunday. He is almost risen. He is risen, it's Sunday, man. Is it Sunday? I thought yeah. it was Monday that he rises. Yeah, roll away the stone, man. On a Sunday? Yeah, Sunday. <laughs> What's Monday for then? Rolling it's just cold, <laughs> isn't it? Just for, just for lols. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to apologise to my son then. Why, what have you been telling him? What lies have you been filling his head with? Because, yeah, he said he he rises on a Sunday. Well, he does, yeah. I thought it was a Monday. I thought it was like he'd be done after the weekend. Oh, my God. My eight-year-old like aced the Easter quiz this afternoon. I bet he did. I should explain. I, I've been barn raising <laughs> since about two o'clock this afternoon oh, <laughs> at God. Grandma's house. I just assumed that happened every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been hitting the doom bars hard. Oh, we had... Um, <laughs> My uh, granny... This is going to go long. <laughs> uh, grandma was saying, she's been saying for a few weeks, Keep your, don't throw your tins out, your tins of beans and whatnot. Do the accent, come on. <laughs> <laughs> don't just throw away your tins of beans, laddie. The next time you go to Aldi... <laughs> she calls it Al- Al- Aldi. Aldi. Oh, she won't say Aldi, she says Aldi. Mm. Keep your tins because uh, she had like, she set up like a, not a coconut shy, but like a tin can alley. Tin, tin pan alley. alley. Tin can alley. Tin yeah. pan alley. Tin pan alley. Where you get the tins <coughs> and you stack them in like a triangle shape, like a like yes. a rack of p- snooker balls. Pyram- pyramidion. P- a pyramidion. <laughs> and then we got three shots each because uh, gran- grandma knitted pokeballs. What? Do you know what a pokeball is? Yes. Pikachu, I choose you! Yes. She you know, knit, how many did she knit? Oh, uh, a dozen? 15, wow. 20? I don't know. She cares, doesn't she? She's a caring uh, Bored in lockdown. I think that's when right. she met them. Okay. And uh, so she has all the, So you get three balls each and there's your pyramidion of, yes. of Aldi tins of beans and you three three shots to hit the pyramidion. That so that's one, one Easter game we played. Do you aim for the middle of the bottom rung? I think you just aim to hit any of them. Ah. <laughs> what's weird is because they're knitted there's no weight mm. you can't throw them hard you've no. got to aim and got to lollop it float them uh, nah. what, what's the the, the the diver flubber got pit not a flubber not a flubber <laughs> Fosbury flop Fosbury flop Fosbury flop he was a, a, a flipper tall tall jumper <laughs> not to be confused with the Fosbury fizz which was a drink. <laughs> <laughs> why? Did, why? <laughs> why does everything have to be about content. ejaculate? No, Fosbury Fizz is from Fortnite. Oh, it's right. one of the. Um, it's, oh. a, it's a big, massive jar. It's a master battery. <laughs> you shake up round your crotch, and it gives you health and shields. Oh, of course it oh, does. Fosbury right, Fizz, yeah. right? You know, if you're a Fortnite, Fortnite aficionado like me. <sighs> so we did that, and we had an Easter quiz as well. My grandma did a, an Easter quiz with uh, it was tricky, some tough, some easy questions. Did you bring tough... it with you? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, give me questions. Some, for... Do you want some questions? Yeah. <coughs> um, so some 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 easy ones, some medium, and some difficult ones. So, um, oh, this was a good one. An even spread. Who washed his hands? Jesus. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Who washed his hands of Jesus? Who washed his hands? Oh, was that and what Thomas? Dif- what difficulty level is this? <laughs> A child? <laughs> Pontius Pilate. Oh, yeah. And uh, Uncle Jim went, oh, that guy. Oh, what's he called? Captain Blackbeard. Uh, no, he was in Roman Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Pilot. <laughs> That was a good one. Good one, Jim. <laughs> oh, it was a joke. It was a yeah, joke. Yeah, the pilot was <laughs> in the Roman Air Force, for fuck's sake. Yeah, nice. Oh, so we're, well, we're so saying that they didn't have an Air Force. There was one. The youngest person there got the, was the only person who got the question right. For Pontius right. Pilate. No, this one. Who um, helped carry the cross on the way to Golgotha? 
Sherpas. Do you remember the bit where he falls? Yeah. And then a, the guy comes out of the crowd and helps him. Mm. Mm. Tough one. Thomas Aquinas. <laughs> Thomas Aquinas. No. You're not going to get it. Oh, yeah. Something. Uh, John the Baptist. Something Latin. <laughs> <laughs> <Actually dead. laughs> He's already dead. <laughs> Uh, uh, Simon of Cyrene. Simon. Simon, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, well, Cyrene. Uh, yeah, put you out of your misery. God, we're shit at Easter. Um, can you name the 12 apostles? That was a question. Point for each apostle oh, or a disciple. Uh, Dave. Right, so mm-hmm. we've got Dozy. Matthew, mm-hmm. Luke. Mm-mm. No, Matthew. Mark. Mark. Mm-mm. Matthew. <laughs> so, no, Mark wasn't apostle. Luke Judas. was after. Peter. Ju- Simon Peter, <laughs> Judas, Is it Matthew. Si- Simon Peter or Simon and Peter? <laughs> You're Simon thinking of Simon and Trevor. <laughs> Trevor, swing your pants. Swing your pants. We Thomas, do we said Thomas. Well, we, we don't do duvets. <laughs> Sorry, Jesus. <laughs> Thomas, how many are we on? Thomas, so Thomas, you're doubting Thomas. You said Matthew, you said Simon Peter. Judas. You said Judas. Matthew. Which one? Oh, we said Matthew. Iscariot. Is it two, Iscariot. Is it two Judases? That was a clue. <laughs> Judas of Arimathea. <laughs> <laughs> Judas Zealot. Judas. Judas Zealot. He's a zealot, is he? Yeah. One was a zealot. One was a sicario. You know why they call him sicario? Because he used to. Ooh. The uh, the those those and uh, funky Jews used to carry knives, and they were hey, Assassin's Creed. They were assassins. Yeah. Oh, fuck that's eight. And uh, which one? We're, we're up to five then. Yeah, yeah. Another, uh, there's Michael. not another seven. Shamal. <laughs> Shamal. No, no, Michael, I'm afraid. Good shout, though, because that's an old Azizel. Judean name. John. John? Yes. yes. The, the disciple John. who Jesus loved. James. James. Yes. Which Here we James? Go. The brother of two Jesus. Two James. There's James and James. <laughs> James of Iscariot. So there's, there's two James, yeah. I was, I was thinking of the band. <laughs> James 1. James 2. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sit down. <laughs> I think we're on eight. So James one, James two. Yeah, how many? Uh... Does Jesus count? Nope. Oh. You're looking at one. Twat. <laughs> <laughs> Philip. Yes, Philip. Philip. Is there one called Isaac? No. Uh, Have we had a Matthew? We've had Matthew. All right. I think there's three left. There's definitely not two Matthews. Right. Nope. Ben. Shane? No. <laughs> I don't think. Bartholomew. Yeah, no, Bart. No, party. Andrew. And Andrew. Andrew's not a disciple. Yeah, yeah he died on Second. a wonky cross. I think he was one of the fishers of Galilee, <clears throat> one of the early early adopters. Andrew <laughs> Fisher. I'd say Andrew's cross. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Uh, who are we missing? We had Thomas. We had uh, Matthew. Oh, we must have had them all. Matthew. Mary Th- Th- Magdalene. Th- 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 Thaddeus, maybe. Thaddeus? I think there was a Thaddeus. <laughs> Might have been a Thaddeus. There is a lot of guys to be keeping an eye on, isn't it? Jeez. It is. No wonder they got up to mischief, is it? Yeah, fuck. You know. So there was 13? No, there was 12. Oh. But we, 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 I couldn't remember. The, oh. I thought we we named 11. Maybe we were missing one. But, yeah. you know, it's good enough. That's enough points, isn't it? What's the, the what, does anyone know on the chat? Oh, we haven't even been looking. Do we? I don't have to look at the freaking chat. <sighs> yeah, keep it on. It's good. Honestly. Rudolph. Rudolph. <laughs> there you go, yeah, Rudolph. We miss Rudolph. Paul! Blitz, Blitz, Paul, give over. <laughs> Paul never met Jesus. That was the whole thing. It was a Damascene conversion, founder of the Catholic Church, otherwise known as Josephus. Flavius, if you listen to Ralph Ellis. Oh, I knew we've missed out. Oh. Francis Bacon. <laughs> Bacon nuts. Bacon nuts. He was there. Come yeah. on. What have you been doing today, Ben? I set fire to some stuff. Um, on purpose, in what? So, uh, in an incinerator. A garden incinerator. Yeah. And Tell it, you what, it gets, gets up some heat. And we um, are definitely saying that that wasn't a barbecue. It's not a bar- it's, it's a big bin. Big metal bin with holes in the bottom. And a... Mm. And a a chimney lid. A chimney lid. Yeah. Yes, Do you not have to call it a chimney? A chimney. A chimney lid. A chimney lid. <laughs> Is it a chimney? No, it's an incinerator. Have you ever been to a garden centre? No. No. Right. Yeah. 
I mean, <clears throat> I think every garden <laughs> is not complete without a rusting. Yeah, it, that's bin exactly it. Rusting bin that you set fire to stuff in. Does the do you think that the actual ignition of a fire within an, a, a garden incinerator, a bin fire, mm-hmm. or a fire bin? Yes. Do you think that that then makes it more easy for said bin to rust? I don't know if it has an effect Why on you the galvanization need... of the the initial uh... <coughs> Do you think it burns off? Is it zinc or something? Possibly. <sighs> what a Maybe fucking... that's what I inhaled. <laughs> but I got a big lung full of burning shit and that was fun. Okay. No, so uh, I took the caravan to get washed, which was arduous. Where did you take your caravan to get washed? To a ben? petrol station with a with a one pound, put a pound in, get two minutes of spray. And so you, what you did with your caravan, Ben, is that you reversed it into a car washing bay. Into a car washing bay, a power wash bay. You really don't give a fuck about other people, do you? No, do I fuck? They don't give a fuck about me. <laughs> and, and what did you take with you? Uh, Fifteen pound coins. <laughs> and a, a pair, pair of, of <laughs> step ladders so I could do the roof. And you took some step ladders, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I did. I was up there on the power washer and the brush. The <laughs> brush that you're never to use on your car, but it's fine. Did you wear leather chaps? Uh, I'll tell you what I wore, Phil. I wore <laughs> uh, waterproof trousers, Huge. Wellington boots, and a and a you know a waterproof coat. However, my face and head wasn't wasn't protected <sighs> from the spray. Right. And as a result, in the shower after the burning, because obviously I stank of all Smell. the evidence. Yeah. Um <clears throat> I had a shower and I couldn't wash my hair effectively. <laughs> and I thought, what the fuck is this? Why is it why is it not working? I realized that I had the I had the wax on on the spray when I was doing the caravan, so I've essentially waxed my entire head. You should have uh, waxed off. I should have waxed off, yeah. So what Mr. Miyagi would have done. Sprayed caravan wax all over your beard and hair. Yeah, it is, yeah. My entire my entire head was soaked. In wax. In waxy water, yeah. And is your caravan even fully finished, Ben? What do you mean? You said that you you couldn't get some of it. I couldn't reach some areas with the £15 uh, time allotted. No. Could you not do it at home? No, I can't get it up to up the hill, up the drive to the manor. <laughs> oh, right, you can't get it to the house. No, it's Can't... too remote. Can you not just do it in the road, like, you know... But like <laughs> outside the village, like <laughs> need a big fucking oh, up the hill. <laughs> Mad Max up the hill to your right. Okay, I thought you meant like you drive. No, no. <laughs> so you've got a. So you why can't you can't why can't it do it? But the roads are all narrow and shit, and it's oh. Oh. yeah. I think it's a skill thing rather than <laughs> kind of you know technological physical problem. Yeah. So people would. Here it, comes, I think they tut. His, he they might even again. pick up their small dogs. In Look his, at this twat. In his yeah. filthy caravan. Dragging this big filthy thing up our nice road. I know, yeah. Yeah. I've not Honestly. seen him in that loud car for a, for a while. <laughs> Have you got your car back? No, it's still it's still waiting Fucked. to be fixed. Waiting? Yeah, I need to I need to pull my finger out. Hey. There's, there's two other stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'm loath to pay a lot of money for it. Where is it now? Job. Is it just at your dad's then? Mm. Just yeah. rotting. Like the last one. <laughs> well, it's like if it's not worth... It depends what it's worth, doesn't it? If it's going to cost a £1,000 to fix it and it's worth 1500 quid, then it's not worth it. You'd be better buying a new one. No, it? it's it's worth it to fix it. It's worth about oh. ten grand. Why don't you do it then? Well, I will when I can be bothered sorting it out. I want to get a good deal. Oh. I've got other stuff to pay for. I've got to... Uh, just had to put new tyres on the other car and <laughs> nice. oil service. I know. I think it's Ben stroking the, the table with his leg. legs. Yeah, big <laughs> long legs. Is it this? I don't know. I'm getting some leg noise. <laughs> Me and Ben went his to joints. Went to the cinema <laughs> yeah. on Sunday. Didn't we did. We, on we went Thursday oh, even. Say again. I missed that. We went to the cinema on Thursday, wow. and he didn't fall asleep. Mm. There was some at some points. There was some loud mouth breathing, but <laughs> other than that, it was fine. Standard. What mm. did you watch? Dune. Two. Dune, Dune two. 2, yeah. Dude. Yeah. Didn't get the sexy popcorn bucket. No. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I had a lot of snacks and didn't eat them all. 
Yeah, but you had a f- you got I gave you a beer that I didn't I mean that I wanted <laughs> to give you. Yeah, it was it was horrible, but I felt obliged <laughs> to slip it down. And you did as well. Yeah. Good for you. Thank you. It was a marshmallow stout, was it? No, no one wants that. And it was very fizzy. It was. It was oh, fizzy it was stout. So fizzy. It was like. It, it, was it thin? It was. It was a thin, fizzy stout. Fuck that noise. I'm well, it didn't taste of marshmallow. It tasted of ass. <laughs> <laughs> that was the guy sat next to you, I think. Oh, there was a there was a larger. Gentleman. Hey, whoa! <laughs> hey, whoa, Ben. I meant the other way, me. <laughs> That's what I was saying. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. How's the film? It's good. It's good. I'd give it four mats. I would think I'd give it four mats because it saves me to think about it. I think, again, it could have been split into, like, two films. It was It was very, yeah. it was very quite... It was fast-paced, wasn't it? And Were you disturbed by the lack of North African representation <coughs> in, the, in the actors? No. Is that a thing? Apparently. I read it today. Are they supposed to be? Does it say in the book that they're like? Well, Arrakis is a North African country, isn't it? Not an imaginary <laughs> planet. <laughs> I mean, I think the 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 Fremen were quite multiracial, weren't they? Not North African, though. I think the specific right. there is specific. Irk that oh, you stop rubbing your that. legs. Yeah. It's your legs. Let's take your jeans off. <laughs> take your pants off. <clears throat> no, yeah, no. I mean, uh, it is like sci-fi. Yeah. <laughs> it's like sci-fi. It is sci-fi, so, you know, it's not real, is it? No. Who knows what it would look like on Arrakis? Exactly. It was an ocean planet, wasn't it? Is that not the legend? Or something? At one point, yeah. I think, uh, uh, but, but things get colonised, man. It's like nothing's set in stone. Mm-hmm. Look at North America. Yes. You know, they're mainly Irish. From Irish descent, aren't they? That was the biggest first wave of immigrants was uh, the Irish... Yeah. Immigration. Things change. Australia. Good day. Good day. Might. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like things change with technology. I guess that, that's such an old. It sort of harkens back to thousands. Harkenings and, back. <laughs> yeah, harkenings back to thousands nice. and thousands of years ago, where people were adapted due to the climate, the, temp, the zone that they lived in. Yeah. So if you lived in a northern latitude, you're going to have fur hair. Um, What's that thing with um, um, the igloos, igloo people? What are they called? Inuits. Inuits, where they like <clears throat> the, sh- the shape of the face is adapted. Is it flatter or something to stop the wind? I don't know. Something. I <laughs> think they'd have like a, point, a pointy head, like spy versus spy. So it's like like less even... surface area to stop heat escaping or something. It's a bit wild, isn't it? Something to do with frostbite, I would imagine. And probably like the side, the eyes as well. You know, but that's all been and gone like we've adapted past all that now do you think we're evolving longer thumbs so we can reach the corners of our smart devices (laughs) (laughs) probably (coughs) watch this space the long thumbed humans you know what we haven't got that's putting me off the uh the fire where's the fire phil I don't think we had one. it. We haven't had it for a while, I don't think. I don't no. think we need it. In the background, you mean? Yeah. Ah, I can't be bothered. I can't bother looking for it now. I can light a candle. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. What have you done this week, Matt? Um, not really very much. I've just been moving bedrooms around in the house. In- so, mm-hmm. basically, one of the boys... Brick by brick. Yeah. <laughs> One of the boys had a, one of the big bedrooms and he's gone into the other big bedroom and the younger boy was in the box room and now he's gone into the other other big bedroom which the big brother used to be in and I've moved my office stuff into the um, box room now. I'm like a real home worker now with my own office space Ooh. with um, nursery wallpaper. Nice. <laughs> nice. Blow Tigger, that shit out. Tigger and poo. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not that bad. But it's like foxes. <coughs> oh, is it really? Yeah, foxes. Oh, yeah. oh, nice. Yeah, I didn't mean. Yeah. So, and then we went out today. We went out for stretched our legs, bought some fudge, giant cookie, and uh, had a very expensive meal. Nice. Very expensive, but 
More expensive than Weatherspoons, but you know, it was nice. Nice to get out. And there was no signal in said restaurant. Ooh. Beautiful. What, what's the name so I can go? I think it was called Novello. All right. Um, and then, so the, yeah, no devices. Mm. I don't let my kids use the devices if we go out anyway. I Not mean, the table. there is a disagreement it's within the family. Really? It fucking winds me up. We'll be sat at a table at a restaurant, a pub, whatever, and there'll be a table next to us with like three kids on three different devices. I just want to fucking shake them. Throttle Shake them out of this. Burn the pub down. Stupid. Yeah. Fuck's sake. It's like your mum and dad are paying good money for this. To spend time. Can with you me. not, you know, extract your eyes, eyeballs from. Well, no, because it's loading me with dopamine. Yes. Exactly. You should have dopamine and salt and pepper as the three, <laughs> the three condiments. The condiments. Yes. Excuse me, I think you've uh, forgotten our dopamine. <laughs> you get some, please. You'll see. Yeah, so that was nice, and it, it kind of proved that we can uh, survive as well as a family. <laughs> so I'm weird. convinced that we can do that. Yeah, was it ever in question? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, with certain certain factors, yeah, <laughs> within the family unit, I think. Yeah, <sighs> well, there's yeah, so it's been nice. And then tomorrow, I don't know. Well, I don't know what tomorrow will hold. Oh, well, this is a thing that we should talk about because it's apparently it's not a universal pastime. Ah, uh-huh, no. Which is in Preston. What we do... Flobbercopting. Well, no, that's just you. Um, not just, Phil. Well. <laughs> you need a partner. <laughs> right. Otherwise uh, it don't work. I don't know. I don't know with you. <laughs> Zeus. <laughs> Um, you ain't got tits <laughs> which is ro- egg rolling yeah apparently this is unique isn't it to Preston, Preston. Thing, yeah. I like just parched peas I'm sure everybody rolled their easter eggs down the stairs didn't they as a child yeah but we were all from Preston so exactly was... does everyone else in the country roll them downstairs I don't know that's what we need to ask yeah t- does anyone roll the eggs you need to explain what we do in Preston at, at the park we go to the first. big park in the middle of town and there's a big hill. There's a big hill in said park. And everyone in... rolls their eggs, their Easter eggs wrapped down the hill and then chases after them and then eats them. It's kind of like the cheese rolling thing, isn't it? Kind of. But, but with, with but chocolate. With chocolate eggs. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's more controlled. <laughs> the park is a... Oh, I don't think it's controlled, Ben. Um, I've not been for years. <clears throat> it's a natural amphitheatre, isn't uh, it? Yes, yes, it is. Um, yeah, there's like chariots and shit. Going around. Well, there's the Christians is... being fed to lions. Yeah, Scythian archers. Well, there are. There are archers. Have you not seen the uh, reenactors that practice there? Oh, Larpers. Yeah, at the yeah. weekend. Oof. The what? Larpers. Larpers. Yeah. Live action yeah. role play. Oh, right. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so there are people there. Right. No egg rolling here. Right. Okay. See, so, I think it's a Preston thing. I think it is a Preston thing. The egg rolling. This is what I've heard. People look at you like, what? <coughs> you roll an egg yeah. down a hill. Are you mad? Yeah. You're mad. But just think of that symbolism. It's huge. What? what? <laughs> the rolling the egg. The rolling of the egg. <coughs> it's kind of like the grand old Duke of York, isn't it? Whoa. Ne- he had 10,000 eggs. New York State in the 70s. We did that. But what? also oh, egg so, and spoon races. So this is uh, Jason McCrash in the chat. In the 1970s in Western New York State, we did that, but also races with spoons and eggs, otherwise known as an egg and spoon race. Wow. Yes. But by the 80s, it was gone. It was gone. Why? No staying power. Was it, uh, you know? Oh, you rolled the egg across the lawn with the spoon. So it's a, it's oh, a, with this? Wow. It's a derivation of an egg and spoon race. That's, wow. That's a bit like blue football. What came first, the egg or the spoon? Spoon. Depends who's more polite. Mm. Well, what you want to do with the dessert spoon? See, is <laughs> warming up. Yeah, yeah you want to put an up. egg in your ass. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, here we go. Try and find it. Come on, Phil now, Ben. <laughs> Phil. So yeah, there's that. There's parched peas. Shut we up. Have, don't we? 
All you need to do with the de- dessert spoon is put it in a bowl of warm water as well before you shove it up your ass. Yeah, there you go. That's good advice. Yeah. This is the gift that keeps on giving. We're a mm. value for value podcast. I'm sure that was what was carved above the entrance of Plato's Academy. I think it was. It wasn't, you know. I oh, wasn't. It wasn't, you know, <laughs> non let none who were ignorant of geometry enter this place. It was that what you said. I wish the carrot was my penis. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the, a wrong quote. <laughs> I imagine the carrot was my penis. Uh, it's imagination. <laughs> P- I say penis. Uh, quite so yeah, egg, egg rolling, great, good. Yes, yeah. fun. Egg rolling. Have you ever rolled an egg mm. on Avedon Park? Mm. Only as a child. I've not been for like twenty, well, more. I 30, don't think 40 I. Years. I think I rolled them downstairs, but I don't know if I was allowed to go rolling down the park. No. You never no. rolled in the park? I don't think so. Are you going tomorrow? I don't no. know. It looks it depends. if it's raining, I don't think I'll go. But if it's if it's nice, if it's pleasant, I'll go. <laughs> be busy. I mean, the problem is it'll be full of, you know, Preston people. Chaz. Chaz? Chaz. What's Before that? Cha. Right. Chaz, won't it? Chaz. Yeah, I mean, I've been into Preston Town Centre a few times in the in the day. It's bad. And it's scary enough in the daytime, <laughs> isn't it? I yeah. went to Bank a few weeks ago. I was like, "Holy shit, what has happened to this yeah, place?" It's changed, bro. It's uh, it's pretty ropey. <laughs> uh, the people wandering around. There was a guy following us. I don't think he was. Well, he actually was, but I don't think he was. You know what I mean? <laughs> because he, we were going to the library, and the library is it used to be in the in the Harris Museum, which was lovely. Mm. Neo classical, neo classical, yeah. You know, what's it called? Civic building. Um, but it's closed down, hasn't it? Whilst they're renovating it, it's been closed for like four years or something ridiculous. And the library is in an old guild, what's it called? Guild Hall. Guild Hall, yeah. Um, which is like a, a 70s kind of thing, is it? 60s? Br- brutalist. Is it? Is it? I don't know. Maybe. Something like that. It's got like a shopping arcade at the bottom and the library's in there and it's the only thing that's open in it now, so it's quite scary. Mm. Um, but anyway, we went in there and there was this man kind of, when we come out of the bus station, shuffling behind us with, you know, shoes on that are too big for him and a, a jacket was too big, matted hair. I was just trying to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> I know, matted with caravan wax. <laughs> um and we kind of got past him and then the youngest was like staring at him going with a horrified face kind of thing um and we got past him i thought we're done we're done got into the library there's like a what i would assume is a a homeless gentleman asleep in a corner in the library with a book um and then we were in there for a few minutes and the man came shuffling in (laughs) after us and like stood behind us. I thought, what is going on here? Maybe so, it's just it's after a book. P- probably. That's probably the best thing to think about. Um, but it made me think about uh, Home Alone. It reminded me of that man a little bit. The shovel. The shovel man. What's his name? With the rubber boots. No one knows. It was a question. One of Bolt Upright's quizzes was, oh. what was the name? It was, for one point, can you name <laughs> the shovel man and the pigeon lady? <laughs> <laughs> no, no one can. Uh, yeah, so yeah, he looked like him, but like more matted hair and and a little bit dis- more disorientated. More unkempt. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, you know. And he didn't, he, he wasn't dragging a shovel. He didn't have, he didn't have kinky... Um, the S and M boots on <laughs> PVC boots on. No, those buckles. Yeah, those. What were the buckles for? Why does he need buckles? Pirate. He's pirate cosplay. Larping as a pirate. He'd shovel you that's in the head, new, and then that's a new acronym. I'm gonna. You never heard larping? No. Gosh. Wow. I've heard of live action role play, but I've not heard it acronymized. Anachronized. <laughs> acronymized. <laughs> Well, yeah, it is LARPing. You've learned something on this podcast. LARP. What would you LARP as? What would you be your choice LARPing adventure? The only thing that's coming into my mind that's of of that ilk is TNG. (laughs) Yeah. 
Yeah, Star Trek's a good... Uh, what would you be like a, just a red shirt away team instant death would you not want to don a um a dressing gown a cheap dressing gown and grab a towel and do the whole where's it going, <laughs> going? <laughs> no where it's going no <laughs> right don't panic on the back of your ipad is that uh oh like think from hitchhiker's yeah. guide right okay no I read some of those books, I think. I read quite a lot. I don't know if I read all of them, maybe. Yeah. It got a bit boring after a bit. It was kind of the same. A bit mm. long-winded. Yeah. Quite a lot. Five, there are five books in the trilogy. <laughs> okay. Well, that sounds about right. I think I read them all. Mm. Um, I don't know. I mean, what's probably what's like the kinkiest role play? Like Barbarella. Sam, <laughs> Sam Smith. Yeah, probably. Um, what did what did those animal ones do? Did they? Is it furries? Is that, <laughs> fuck, yes. yes. I don't forget about furries. Wait, do, you, do you remember? Was it? Did, was it you and me went to that comic con in Preston? Yeah, where they had the furries. The fur, not fairies, furries. 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 People yeah. dressed as cats. I'm, I'm related to have, a furry. Do you yeah. have to wear a tail butt plug? A fur suit? No. I think if you're taking it seriously, you do, oh. and it has to be. It has to be inserted into your... <coughs> I mean, that's the the uh, popular slander, isn't it? That it's some sort of king. sex thing. It's a sex thing, yeah. But it's generally young people who are getting involved in it, like teens, tweens, Ooh. who get roped in, like, uh, you know, someone I know who was like 12, right. 13, getting involved in this stuff. And I was like saying, well, I wasn't directly involved, <laughs> but I was saying, you know, you need to watch out for this. This ain't good. This sh- shouldn't be messing with this stuff. But, you know, give 11, 12-year-old girls access to social media. This is the kind of shit they get wrapped up in. Before you know it, I'll leave that story there. But it, you know. Shit. Well. Covered in piss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bad news, man. It's like you've got to be so careful with this shit. The kids aren't ready for it. It's like, um, is it? Oh, there was some news from um, Florida. That DeSantis guy. Have you seen this week? He's Ronald put, DeSantis. Ronald DeSantis. When he's not battling Disney, because there was a lawsuit going on with Disney and some rights to the park or something. Ah, uh, yeah, they don't pay tax or something. Yeah, it's, they have some sort of or tax. Or a religion or some no, they, weird shit. It's, they have their own lo- laws, didn't they? Uh, have their own yeah. police. Bylaws and, yeah. and shit. But it is, it is apparently brought into law this week um, a social media ban for 14 years and younger. Wow. Yeah, cool. But Fair it's enough. not gone through because it will be appealed, obviously. Mm. And it's whether they, like the Supreme Court is going to be like a test case. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, it's interesting. There's, uh, definitely the pushback is starting to happen. Yeah. It's like the pushback all... will only be from the tech companies. Kids oh, of course are will. so resilient that after after two weeks of not being on social media, they'll just go on to something else. Mm. It's like Jonathan Haidt was saying, one of his experiments where the, um, they were doing interviews with, with tweens and, and kids and what, and they're all on it because the friends are on it. If they mm. could, if they had the option to not, if they, that was part of the questionnaire, they said, "Would you like to come off social media?" No. Would you like to come off social media, and all your friends come off social media? Yes, and it would make them so much happier. Mm. It's it's the it's the peer pressure not wanting to be left out, which is the the hook that's getting into them, which I understand. It's like. Um, not having a phone if you're the only kid who doesn't have a phone mm-hmm. at some point the parent has to step in and say well no you're not having a phone because it's not good for you no you know you can have one when you're 18. Yes. my daughter never keeps those bloody charged so mind them he won't it. take it out no <laughs> and we, we didn't have them no we didn't no. we didn't have them but we're, we're more reluctant these days i think to just mm. let our kids out without mm. some sort of tracking device yeah. that's what's mad it's like no, my oldest is 12 now. I think at 12, we were at that age where we would just go out for a day. We'd go into town, bikes. yeah. I think I, think I was at... Shoplifting stuff. Yeah, did you have a key when you were 12? 
Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. I think um, we were definitely setting fire to things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Remember that. The allure of fire. <laughs> um, oh, Never yeah. leaves you. <laughs> and finding uh, like pornography in bushes. I was going to oh. say, yeah, woods porn. That, that doesn't happen anymore. Woods porn, I think it's probably definitely, maybe we should keep it going. <laughs> well, I found. That's maybe the thing, like the next generation's relying on us to, to plant it. How much do you think a jazz mag costs nowadays? <laughs> a pound? Fuck, I bet it isn't. I bet it's really? a shitload. I was in WH Smith's. Oh, Reader's Wives? When yesterday, WH Smith's yesterday. They still sell them? No, I wasn't looking at jazz mags. Uh, <laughs> magazines in general are like eight, nine <laughs> really? pounds. Really? Yeah. Right. Oh, they can't be that much. We, we should, well, we'll find out. That's our homework for this week. We'll buy some jazz mags and, and, and leave them in some the woods in, in a carrier bag. Yeah, they were always in a carrier bag, which was thoughtful. They need to be well thumbed. You'd have to keep all of them for a while. There was some. I remember got some in there actually. Some okay. old ones, some like vintage ones. Found Crack them out. I mean, well, I'm kind of reluctant to let them go. To be honest, yeah, <laughs> worth a fortune. <laughs> Where did you find those? In the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Are they the ones? The woods porn. Are they the, the original <laughs> ones we found in like 1995? I think some are woods porn. I think some we got from Dodgy Dave. Bring right, out the woods okay. porn. Show it on the camera. <laughs> no, uh, I lent I some uh, pornography to a friend, and he and he <coughs> soiled it. <laughs> what with shit? No. With what? With, with jism. Yeah. <laughs> Every single page. Oh, oh my God. He it. How long did they have it for? Move. A week? A, a while, yeah. A but while. But he he ruined tried to every give it single... back. No, I said, where's my, where's my gear, man? I want it back. Anyway, and he kind of sheepishly gave it, it me. It got burnt in a fire. <laughs> sheepishly gave him. I said, what the fuck's this? He uh. spilled like tea on it. It, it. it fell in my garden incinerator. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, I remember I secured that pornography from, I think it was Mill Lane Park in Preston. So if you want to look it up on the internet. Yeah, uh, we found Woods Porn there. And um, I hid it in my next door neighbor's bush at the bottom of his garden. There must be Woods Porn <laughs> everywhere. There was Woods Porn down the brook, around the, down the back of here. Yeah, all in May, Mayfields. We all found Woods time. Porn in the Mayfields. What was it all about? Is it just something that was passed down through the generations? That it's a should... rite of passage, I think. It's like a dead drop from old Cold War <laughs> spies, except with porn. <laughs> Maybe it was like... It's a care package. Yeah. Yeah. Madness. So maybe we need to restart that. That's what I'm saying. But do, people, do children or teenagers hang out in do, the woods? Do they even wank anymore? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> did he? <laughs> um, did he even set fire to things? I mean, we were trying to set fire to a social club, but... Like 12. I don't think we were trying. No. I think it was accidental. Well. Don't like implicate us in arson <laughs> on a live stream. I was joking. Good. Yes. No, you play with fire. I remember playing with aerosol cans. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Flamethrower. Yeah. Mm. Did you ever heat up? You could buy like Zippo flints from the shop without any questions. And you could put them in a, uh, like a, like a, pair of pliers hold on to one light underneath it till it gets red hot and throw it down and it explodes that was quite fun no i never did, no, did we, we didn't have pliers i don't think no. we had pliers you just we said use hands. fingers <laughs> i mean yeah some of the things horrendous <laughs> yeah it's horrendous things yeah, so I don't... getting beaten up by bigger boys yeah getting chases and stuff um Rope swings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, rope swings over roads. <laughs> like, down uh, that rural lane around the back of here that takes you up to the, the rugby club. Mm. Lightfoot Lane? No, like Boys Lane and... Uh, oh, lane. Walker, lane, Walker yeah. lane, yeah. We had a rope swing that went off the steep hill over the road. Wow. For a, over over the man Greyfriars Mansion? Near, it was near there, did you, did, but it, it wasn't... It would be good if you went over it onto Greyfriars Mansion and you had the guard dog snapping at your feet. <laughs> that would have made it. Have the ace released the hounds. Yeah. No, it, was just, it was just super dangerous. We did a lot of super dangerous shit in the old days. I don't think... I, I don't know because I'm not 
13 anymore. Um, but I don't think kids are like that these days. Do you see, less you, adventurous. Hmm. Do we do so. or do we assume that? And it's just all a secret, like it was all a secret from our parents. No way. <clears throat> no, I don't think so. Right. Did you ever have any contraband weapons? Like the old Black mm. Widow <laughs> catapult? No, I had a, a well, I had a lock knife and a pe- and several pen knives. Nice. Um, I, my best friend's dad bought me the lock knife. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had a Swiss Army knife as far as hand to hand combat <laughs> went. I remember taking a pen knife uh, to school one day. Uh, wow! Yeah. For some reason, I don't know why. Show and tell, or whatever the equivalent was. I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel I got caught with it. I imagine when I've been severely told off little uh like air guns did you ever have an air gun no you had you had you had a catapult an air gun i had a a black widow catapult yeah where did you get catapult from catapult was bought from entwistle guns on the cattle market really yeah yeah you bought that that. i used to hang around with uh, that i can can i name names (laughs) yeah you know, like Robert Bolton and uh, Chris Ashton, we used to hang around a bit. Right. High school. And yeah, <coughs> he had a, uh, Chris had a rifle. I had a little <laughs> gat gun. Little air rifle, like a point two two or a point one seventy seven. I had a gat gun, which was shit. It was like spring loaded. You had to you put a, a a pellet or a dart in the back, and then you had to kind of push the push the front half of the gun into the into the chassis. Like on a bit of hard concrete or something, and it'd spring out the pellet, and you know, hopefully it doesn't go in your leg or anything. <laughs> um, we used to shoot stuff in the garden, and deodorant cans were fun. And you light a candle next to a deodorant can; it makes a nice. We had to improvise, explosion. really. I didn't have anything. We didn't have any semi-lethal. Weapons. No, it wouldn't get bored no. for me. No. No, I don't think I would, I would have even asked. I think the key was knowing someone with the older brothers. Uh, <laughs> I that's yeah. how he got it. Who was into weapons. Right. <laughs> oh, My yeah. older brother was like into chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> <coughs> that would have been cool to have a catapult or something. I would have yeah, probably killed some animals, though, I think, in those years. Yeah, I felt a bit funny. I think killing that first cat. No, it was a, there was a pigeon, I remember, but I didn't like it. I've told this story before. Have you? Yeah. You murdered a pigeon then. Mm, yeah. Did you eat it afterwards? No. Oh. That's, that's what I regret. Pure sport, blood sport. <laughs> People go fox hunting still. Yeah, I know. Today, you know. Yeah. Or herring. Yeah, Oof. shooting rats like every day of the week if you want to. Some big rats in my back garden. So, get yeah. a rifle. Get an air rifle. Yeah, show the kids how it's done. Yeah. This is how you take care of the family, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. No, there's, a, there's a boy, well, I think he might be 20 now, lives down my road and he's got an air rifle. Mm. There's, there's a rumour that he shot a squirrel once. Wow. <gasps> wow. Grey squirrels, vermin. Vermin. Pigeons, vermin, rats, vermin. Vermin. Yes. Vermin. Um, oh, look. What? Oh, I've upset the parrot. <laughs> oh, I've upset Helen's parrot about the, the, with the pigeon story. Move on quick. Yes. Killing squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, my. I think my uh, animal torture probably was around snails, to be honest with you. Gosh. I still feel, feel bad about killing a snail. If I step on a snail, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. Sorry, well, now, yeah. now, uh, you know, grown into an adult, there's a, a, you know, an inquisitive child. There was never any time that I didn't feel shit about killing anything. Even as... <laughs> Even as a gun-toting... Uh, <laughs> pigeon murderer. Capable owning <laughs> pigeon murderer, yeah. I felt re- that never happened again, and I felt very bad about it. I still feel bad to the day, to this day. Yeah. Right. Maybe there was a different Because I know when Judgment Day comes, it's going to be first on the list of shittery. Errants. <laughs> yeah. So, um, 
I think maybe some of my upbringing. So my my father had a a vegetable plot. <laughs> so I thought you were gonna say rocket launcher. <laughs> so slugs and snails were vermin for him. Yes. Uh, and caterpillars. So if he, he used to one of my jobs was to search the cabbages. Flame throw the cabbage <laughs> patch. <laughs> To search the cabbages for so cabbage butterflies, yeah, to get those caterpillars, slugs and snails. Nice. Um, the big his, four. His mo for murdering snails was to get them and throw them about three gardens down. You uh, fucker! What a fucker! <laughs> I caught my neighbour chucking snails over onto our garden. Really? Hey! I just there were new snails. I just put it in the memory bank. <laughs> right. Okay. Why are they throwing them in your garden? Because she was a cunt. <laughs> she was a twat. <laughs> Sorry, Danger, I meant to say twat. for dogs. <laughs> dogs eating snails get lungworm and shit. Ah, oh, I don't... Really? Mm. Nah. Lung... Why? Dog... Why? I think, I'm think i pretty sure my dog can eat anything. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure your dog tin can eat cans. Eat tin cans, yeah. I'm not yeah, bothered yeah, about yeah. snails. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was going to... Why was she throwing? Was it a woman? I caught her and she was laughing as well. I saw, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw, yeah, I'm not your card, you fucking witch. Wow. That's weird. You live like there's a railway line that backs onto your. Yeah, yeah. Garden. Why not throw them that way? Yeah, oh, yeah, because you're a fucking witch. Wow. Yeah. Is it, was this pre or post her cat being chased by your dog? Post. Ah, there mm. we go. Well, I'm sorry. I have a seven foot fence around the the whole thing. Like if your cat wanders in our garden, yeah, it's game over, it's, man. It's your fault. Fu- I fucking paid the vet bill. Did you? I offered. I went round and said, "I've caught your cat in my garden." And the dogs um, boxed it. Never bit it. Never mm-hmm. picked it up. Could have killed it. This is not our, not Zeus. The dog before, who's a, a bull mastiff cross. And just bat, batted it around, played with it until it limped over the back fence. And I, was, and I went around and said, I've seen what's happened. Oh, my God. It's all in tears and that. So, well, and I, I paid, I think, I didn't, did I pay the vet bill or half the vet, offered to pay off the vet bill? Whereas, you know, I could have said, tough shit. You know, it's your cat. Cats wander about where they want. If it gets caught in our garden, it's a fucking retard. It deserves to get injured, doesn't it? Maybe it'll learn. I think you made the right choice out of those two. <laughs> Well, you know, and then I catch us chucking snails in the garden, laughing. I think, well, fuck you, bastard. So you have a squash racket. You can... <laughs> that would have been nice. Wouldn't it? Yeah. Return. Service. Yeah. <laughs> 15 love. Did you post? Is that why when you posted the turd through a letterbox? Then? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering why I caught you doing that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Good one. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, man. Mm. Yeah, kids are different these days, I think. Well, me and, well, kind of as a family, but mainly me and my eldest son have been watching Harry Potter. The movies? The heresy. Yeah, so just to balance out the, he's got he's got very much into <laughs> Jesus recently. Oh, good. And uh, he's very much into the Easter story. He, he brings it up at least three times a day. And there's this Mel Gibson film that you <laughs> fucking love. I know, yeah. <laughs> um, and he said, yeah. Um, yeah, I really think we should go to church this weekend, you know, because wow. he, he is risen. Does he go? Oh, hang on. Right, well, the, uh, the vicar at his church is based as fuck. He's like a COVID union denier. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe he's uh, indoctrinating your kids. No, I think he just likes the stories. The stories are cool, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. If you think about it. Are, yeah. To a child who's just forming some understanding of the world. Yeah. Throw your uh, net out there. You'll catch 153 fish, man. Yeah, bro. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so just to balance that out, I thought, well, I've heard that the church doesn't like Harry Potter. Let's see if we can get him into this. <laughs> I've got a list of things the church hates. <laughs> yeah. So, um, going to watch it, and we've got to uh, the Half Blood Prince. 
I'm very surprised he sat, actually sat through them all and asked wow. to watch them. Cool. Um, but he burst into tears. Um, a spoiler alert, when Dumbledore gets offed by Snape. Uh, um, it, yeah, but he's very good at faking <laughs> uh, crying. He's quite a good little actor and mimic. Mm -hmm. so, and he was there, he was trying, <gasps> in the chair by himself. <laughs> so he sat like, he sits in this chair in the bay. <laughs> and then, are you crying? <laughs> and uh, my wife goes, shh, shh. <laughs> was he really crying? Was he acting? And then he went, <laughs> <laughs> and he had, and I saw it, and it was like tears coming down. He, all right, he got really into, he got really, really sad when it happened. Wow, well, that's good. Yeah, got him. So it's an end, emotional say, scene, to be fair. Of course, it is. You're gonna give him the choice of who's better, Dumbledore or Jesus? <laughs> Am I gonna? <laughs> well, Potter. <laughs> and yeah, he goes. Yeah, he goes. He <laughs> turns around to me, he goes. This Harry Potter, he, he really isn't a, a good actor, is he, Dad? It's a bit wooden. <laughs> wow, aspiring film critic. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he's How many like, mats did he give it? <laughs> he said, which one's your favourite? Philosopher's Stone. First one. Nice. Really? He's got, he's got chocolate frogs. Yeah, because he's like, Trained you know, him. he's eight, isn't he? So right, okay. it's like the right, that's the right age for him, isn't it? That, the other ones are more, they, they gradually get more and more adult, don't mm. they? And less fantasy and... But okay. I was wondering, you know, like, so I've got foundational memories of watching. Do you remember Legend? <laughs> Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. I the big even, horny guy. <laughs> the, the big horny guy, the devil guy is the yeah. thing that sticks in my mind. Yeah, frightening. That and Labyrinth. Labyrinth. But those being terrified, not, well, being scared by those films. So I was, <laughs> I'm the king of the fairies. <laughs> there was bits in that that were scary. Watcher, watcher. I'm the king of the fairies. <laughs> so do you not have any films yeah. that you watched as a child that you thought, oh, that was scary at the time, and you remember it to this day? Yeah, Exorcist. <laughs> for fuck's sake. <laughs> the thing. <laughs> it's probably Transformers for you, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, gosh, when Optimus Prime died. Exactly, yeah. That fucking ruined me. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. who framed Roger Rabbit? I thought was pretty pretty scary. Oh well, Christopher Lloyd. The dip. Christopher yeah. Lloyd was the bad guy, and didn't his yeah. face melt at the end? Yeah, oh, um, you could have um, what's it? Raiders of the Lost Ark. Ah, uh, yes. The, the face melting. That's his face melt. Tim Curry. What's Tim Curry in? That's it. Be You're at the bottom. No. You're at the bottom. <clears throat> right. It. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. So I was wondering, you know. Because there are some scary bits in it. Are these going to be foundational scary movie moments, uh, memories that have been formed in his mind? I don't think they're scary enough, really. <laughs> Is it Harry Potter? Um, well, I think I think it's comparable to like Labyrinth or Legend, from what I can remember. You know, like the what are they called the the mentors when they suck your soul out. Oh yeah, it's terrifying. Yeah, yeah that's maybe, a bit scary. maybe, maybe. And there's blood. There's mild peril. Yeah. In it? It's mild peril. Yeah. Um, so some of them are a bit are quite dark. Everyone dies. All of his family and anyone he likes dies. You want to try him on, uh, once you get done with Harry Potter, try him on Percy Jackson. Well, yeah, that's uh, you mentioned that, didn't you, a while ago? Uh, my <laughs> eldest has read all the books and he's started reading them again. Read? Read? Yeah, he's a, he's a, he likes to read. Oh, no, God. yeah. What a creep. So he's got he's got like this um millionaire badge at school now. You get when you read a million words. And Is that to... bankable? How does he how does he prove these read? You do a test. So like you give him like the ten books you've read and they'll do they'll give you a test on what's in the books. Ah. I think right. that's how they verify it. Okay. Tell him but to he, pick ten from here. <laughs> <they'll> never... <laughs> he he got really into Percy Jackson. Right, okay. And uh, I'm trying to get the... Well, I went to the charity shop yesterday mm. and I got the... the he do, he's done another series called Magnus Quaid. <laughs> <laughs> Quaid. Quaid. I think it's called Magnus something. Paxson. But it's it's all about Norse mythology. Right. So, but I've only, I only could get book two in the charity shop. So. Uh, you need book one. I know, yes. I'm going to get it on eBay, yeah. Second well, yeah, whatever. he's into these comic. I was telling uh, uh, Amish Ben about this when we went to the cinema. He's into something called Bunny versus Monkey, you know, like comic strip books, basically. Right. And he's read about six in about 
three or four is weeks. Is it seven? Is it eight yet? It's eight now. Just yeah. turned eight in February. But he's not interested in like Harry Potter reading the books. He no, it's too early for that. It's too early for that. Yeah, um, yeah. I read them first, mm. and then my eldest read them like a, a year ago. So when he was like ten, or eleven, right. eleven, I would say. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's getting to that age, isn't it, where they're sort of going from baby books to mm. you know, is that in, you can't read normal books. There's this in between thing where you can yeah. read like Rick Riordan. And uh, Rowley, J.K. Rowling. <laughs> Alistair Crowley. <laughs> Crowley. J.K. Crowley. The, be- <laughs> the beast. Let's drop some Eliphas Levi in there. Some Con- Cornelius Agrippa. And he'll be right then. He'll be an occultist before you know it. <laughs> I'm, reading, I'm not sure he'll uh, be right. <laughs> I've just started reading The History of the Rosicrucians by Arthur Edward Waite. And most of the book is... Um, Comic. Their own writings, the Rosicrucians' own writings that they published in the 17th century. Wow. Yeah, wild. I've only just started it. I've, not, I've read the first two bits, and I'm just about to start The Chemical Wedding, which is the famous thing. It's alchemical. Mm. Yeah. You know what it is? Alchemy. Flubbergopting. It pretty much <laughs> is, yeah. It's probably going to be dirty, isn't it? Ooh. The Chemical Wedding. Nice. Gross. It's, uh, yeah, interesting, isn't it? It's like, I don't know. I never know what to, to pick up next. I'm sort of spoiled by ch- for choice. Mm. And uh, if you've nothing to aim at, if you're not doing, if you're not reading for a purpose, like you're studying for something, or you know, you've got some some something in your head that you're trying to achieve. It's like, well, what do you read next? It's what fiction's for. <sighs> fiction's good if it's good. Like 1984 is a great book. Yeah, and it's important, up there. and it's it's like uh, it's relevant to the real world, but other fiction is candy floss. It's meaningless. So I don't know. What are you reading at the minute? <laughs> I'm still I'm still trying to finish the biology of belief. Oh, Bruce Lipton. Mm. It's a good book. That's been busy. No, it is good. Um, it makes a lot of sense for for what I do as well. You know, in terms of. Um, how your you know your beliefs have an influence over how you lead your life, obviously. But um, he's kind of linking it to biology, isn't he? And perception, yeah, the thing in it. Yes, it's, it's queer. It's a queer book. I don't know. I mean, huh? he got um, <laughs> pardon. It was a huge hit when it came out. I believe like it's over twenty years ago. I think now, and it sort of stirred yeah. things up. And like it was, it was like a kickback against. You know, going back 20 years, we're in the height of the new atheist, Sam Harris, Dawkins, um, Hitchens, Christopher Hitchens, the sort of hyper-determinist worldview. Mm. And then we've, I think it seems like over the last 20, 30 years, we've had a bit of a kickback against that with people like Lipton and uh, Sheldrake, other sort of more open minded is probably not the correct term for it, but. People are opening opening up perspectives on how we think about the world and how we perceive things. It's like just the placebo effect. Mm. Explain that to me with determinism. The it's interest, really difficult. I think there was a lot of stuff in there. Well, I've only read I've read about two thirds of it. Um, it's only a short book, isn't it? But um, it's easy to read. It's common. Um, it, it's quite hardcore. Like when he goes when he starts talking about the cell structure and how the cell works yeah. and stuff. It's not. It's 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 read it's written in plain language, but it's quite it seemed quite advanced microbiology to me. Maybe for you, stuff I'd never heard of. No, I know. I've yeah. heard of like organelles and uh, macrophages, and I've heard of a membrane. Membrane. Well, that that was the big thing he came up with was that sort of re what the membrane does. What? Yeah, reorganize rather than the nucleus. Yeah. Um, no, but the, the one that sticks in my mind from one of the, the studies about the placebo effect was because I'd heard, you know, about the the one where they took um, retirement age people and put them back in time, you know, into the oh, God. and you know everything changed. So I'll explain that, you know, cause I, but we've talked about that before, haven't we? Mm. I bet even Amish Ben can remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, we took a load of people. <laughs> <coughs> it were like in the sixties and maybe in the seventies or whatever. <coughs> and they 
furnished a set of rooms. So it was like when they were back to, in their prime, like in the 30s and the 40s. So it's like all set in the 1950s, basically. So the music was 1950s. The TV programs were 1950s. The furniture was 1950s. Um, and putting those people back into their environment of when they were at their best, in inverted commas, um, it changed how they behaved. So, like, for example, someone went in in a wheelchair, came out walking with a stick. Um, you know, every you know, all this usual grip strength improved. Um, you know, uh, what's it called? Cardiovascular stuff improved. Maximum breath, all that kind of thing improved after a stay in there. I think it was like a week or two. But another one was... I think I have heard this before, but it just reminded me was about a guy did um, a, a placebo experiment on knee replacements. Yeah, I have not. Yeah, I've had this one. <laughs> so one was, it was a, well, it can't have been a double blind. It was a blind <laughs> for the, uh, <laughs> for the, um, uh, the patient. Patient. Yes. Yeah, they didn't know what was happening. So <laughs> the surgeon definitely knew what was happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was one, there was one got a knee replacement, one, Hey, everybody. <laughs> there was three. There what was am I doing? I'm taking the answer. No. <laughs> there was three. You con- decide. There was three conditions. So it's like one got a knee replacement. <clears throat> one got arthroscopy, didn't they? Did they get keyhole surgery? One got it sucked out. Was it, I don't know. And then one got nothing. Yeah. But in the nothing, they sedated them and they, they he took the same amount of time and said the same things when they were unconscious. And the there was no difference basically, and I think in outcome, yeah. So people who believed they'd had a knee replacement um, were able to function exactly the same way and had the same pain levels. I think it was like a percent less um, as people who had a full knee replacement, basically. It's bonkers, isn't it? So sure. how much your belief around your how your knee hurts? Um, there's loads of examples of, you know, has the impact on um, what you felt about it and how much pain you feel. Well, pain is so subjective, yeah. isn't it? You know, it's like it. Mm. Nervous. So Nervous that's system, mad. Yeah. That's mad. Um, <clears throat> there was an, what was the other? Oh, it's just something else popped into my head, but it's gone. Oh, there's Max. He's, got, he's called Max Mosley. He's like, he, was a, he was a doctor and he does stuff on like BBC. Not Max. It's not the... The F one guy. I think he is this guy. I think he's got the same name, but he's he, he's like a doctor, or he did a one year of a medical he's degree. He's got a lisp. Hasn't oh, he? not the Nazi sex parties no. guy. No, <laughs> he, he was Mosley, wasn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's him, Max yeah. Mosley. <laughs> same name, but I don't know if he's called Max. It's something Mosley. Um, but he did one in Blackpool with Mike, um, Mike back pain. Mosley. Mike Mosley. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with for uh, back pain. Mm. And he yes. gave people paracetamol, um, something else, and sugar pills. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sugar pills. And said, look, this is a brand new medication for pain. You know, it's supposed to be really good. And like, you know, obviously, not obviously, but the people who had the sugar pills had the same outcomes for people who uh, were on paracetamol and painkillers, more strong painkillers, basically. It's Mad. wild, isn't it? It's wild. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, if you believe you buy into it and stuff, and how much that you have to believe it, that's yes. the key. Yes, it's like you can't tell them, you can't tell someone that it's a sugar pill. No, it's still no, 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 you yeah. have to believe in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is what's so that, that's what's crazy. Well, isn't yeah. there a nocebo effect? Yeah, 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 that's what he talks that's about. You tell that. him it's yeah. a sugar yeah. pill, yeah. and it, it works, still works. <laughs> works the other way around, works the opposite way, I think, doesn't it? Does it not well, make it worse? So this, that was a story, wasn't it? it the, the, uh, the, that was a slight issue in that he, he referenced some Discovery Channel um, documentaries in the book. As, uh, Ancient aliens. As his, <laughs> as his um, you know... Shark week. Evidence. <laughs> um, but it was an interesting story nonetheless. So there was like a guy, a, a doctor from the 70s, interviewed as part of this, and there was a man who... He misdiagnosed as having throat cancer. So this is the nocebo. He said, you've got throat cancer, you know, you've got X amount of time to live, yada, yada, yada. 
um, he died. The I don't know for whatever reason they do a what's it called po, uh, post mortem, mm. and he had no cancer. Oh shit! And he thinks so. You, that doctor, I assume, must have gone on to the placebo side at that point around manner and things. You know uh, how he explains stuff. Um, but he, he kind of held that and said, like, I've told this guy he was going to die, and somehow he ended up dying, you know. Um, it might have just been a quinky dink, but um, it's a hell of a coincidence, isn't it? Well, uh, that didn't happen to my mate Kev, Kev the joiner. Yeah. They rung, they rung him up from hospital and told him he had lung cancer. Right. And he sold his van and everything and said, well, I've fucked it anyhow. So uh, it's already it's already been written remission for a different kind of cancer, like 10 years ago. Right. And uh, so he's like, oh, he bought a new van. I think he bought a new van because he thought, well, fuck it. I'm going to be dead in 12 months. And then they, they rung him back up like three weeks later and said, sorry, we made a terrible mistake. Wow. You, you don't have cancer. Wow. So, oh, great. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I got this stupid van. <laughs> was it I a pimped insurance. tranny? <laughs> it was the other way around. He'd ordered a van and then he cancelled it. Because right. the, the hospital told him that he had cancer. Uh, and then okay. he lost his deposit. Ah. Uh, and he's fit. He's like healthy. Like, he's had cancer before, but he's like, he's a runner. Right. He's a runner. I'm a runner. You know, I run like half marathons every right. week. Every week? Yeah, every week. He goes out every weekend, does like 10, 15 Ks, 20 Ks, whatever. Well, run thing. Yeah. Jeez. Louise. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's what proper people do, I think. Yeah. That's an interesting, but that. that the idea of you know changing your perception of things and then uh, the knock-on effect on your biology so that you know the, the big thing i suppose he talks about is like is, is the is co- the, the effect of is the hpa system so like um what's that thing you take when you uh have hay fever Antihistamine. yeah so the histamine in something or other what's hpa stand for ben i don't know i don't know so anyway something like that and so, but anyway, when you have when you have lots of stress, cortisol dampens your immune system, I think, from memory, because um, when you're stressed, your brain or, or your body can't tell the difference between an immediate effect and and one you're thinking about, basically. If that makes sense, mm. that you're worried about. So if you're constantly stressed out and, and worried, um, what that does is it diminishes the ability of your immune system to perhaps um, target and destroy, you know, cancerous cells and, and things like that, potentially. So that's the theory behind it. Mm. Um, and Gabor Mate talks about that as well. That's like, like kind of his idea as well, you know, what he's kind of come to. Um, but yeah, it's just an interesting idea, you know, um, around maybe having some positive beliefs about things. Yeah, positive mental attitude. Yeah, it's a physical be to have sometimes. It's interesting. Yeah, and I suppose it works in the reverse way. So, like, if you are someone who does part runs all the time or whatever, or does at least does some exercise, there is a. I used to when I did exercise, <laughs> you get a mental lift from that as well. I think it works in the opposite direction. It has a yeah. A mood enhancing benefit, certainly. So the idea is, isn't it, that you know, there's endorphins, there's dopamine that are released. Um, you probably get serotonin as well, I think, you know, if you, if it's towards like a, a long term goal. Um, but the, when it comes into the belief thing, you go from being, you know, I'm an unhealthy person to, oh, well, I'm a person that runs now. And yeah. how that changes your perception of. Um, how you interact with the world, basically, um, is probably a positive thing, I would say. Mm. Yeah, Ultimately. definitely. Have you heard this about this thing about... <coughs> Sorry, you heard this thing about doing 100 press-ups a day? I've seen adverts about no. this uh, 100 press-ups a day thing. Challenge that, for a month. For old people. Oh, right, okay. I don't know who's sponsored it, whether it's like a, some government, uh, like a charity or a government agency. Can whatever. I do 20... Reps of five. I would hope so. I couldn't do hundred. No, no, Nowhere near. No, you'd have to do it over. You know, do some in the morning, some at dinner time, some in the evening. I guess. Mm. But it's one of those things. It's like um, I think it builds everything, doesn't it? It's not just working your your arms. It's shoulders, your back, 
mm. your legs, your arse, everything. Your core. Your my core, ar- yeah. My arse. Definitely glutes. Right. Definitely okay. works your glutes. I have to go back to do my press ups in the day then. I think you do, yeah. You yeah. don't need gyms. You don't need running machines. It's like you you can use your body your body as a gym. My body's a temple. But your body is also <laughs> a gym, like squats and, and push ups and sit ups is probably all you need. Yeah, to body, get like a body basic weight. basic fitness. level of fitness. Did tell you we bought um a, a pull up bar. Right. To do body weight. Did stuff. it pull the architrave off? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like <laughs> it's a, we have one of those that goes onto the door. Onto yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, but this one's a frame. Like uh, it's it's like freestanding. Gosh. Um, but my wife has put uh, a oh. yoga silk to do so she can do her aerial oh, yoga. Ribbon. Ribbon aerial <laughs> aerial yeah. yoga. Yeah. Wow. It's like Linda Hamilton. Yeah, she will T2. be. T two. She did some stuff like some upside down stuff the other oh, day God. to show me. Oh man! Wow. What I do you think? Down with you. <laughs> <laughs> Not very. I thought it would be more. What color is the silk? It's yeah. like a dark green. Ooh. Oh no! Red. I thought. Red. I thought <laughs> it would yeah. be. I thought. Oh, what's this? Like a sex swing? No. <laughs> it's a yoga silk. It's aerial it. yoga. Yeah. Paraphernalia. She goes. She goes once a week. But now she she knows all the moves now, so she can do it at home. So the thing where you climb up to the top and you like kind of roll down it and then stop towards the bottom. That's like that in circuses. Yeah, that's kind of uh, from a circus. So <laughs> 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 <Sorry to laughs> <sorry. laughs> What are they called those ones? Acrobats? Is it called? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Not like that. No, it's like a hammock, a small hammock. But she you, you wrap yourself in it in different ways, and then you can do all the poses, but in there. Air. and then she also like holds herself literally you know like in the 80s films where you had those boots and it was do you remember and you locked yourself in and then you turned upside down it's a tilt table so sort of yeah it's like but kind of like so she wraps her legs in it somehow and then she can go upside down in the in the frame in the yeah. garden and it's definitely <laughs> it's definitely not to be used for sexual no stuff. that sounds dangerous it's fine is it Fine, yeah. She knows what she's doing. Wow. Yeah. She's a green belt. She's a maybe that's what she's a yogi. Maybe that's soak. why it's green. She has to like get the next dan. Maybe to have a purple belt. Maybe. maybe purple silk. Yeah. So in the class, has, has everyone got their own frame, or is it? Do they take it in turns on the big? I think the big the, string. I think they've got. It's like it's in that. Um, what were they called? Emos at college. And it was like a cafe place, but you were allowed to, like, they, didn't, they turned a blind eye if you may have smoked marijuana. Oh, yeah. What was it called? That, it's in that building, basically. Not Beat, Beat Street. Beat, yeah, Beat Zoo. Street. Zoo. No, Zoo. No, Zoo. 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 Wait, this is Zoo. Yeah. Right, yeah. So is there not, like, beams in the top? If it, was Oof. it in the top? I can't remember. Yeah, it was up some stairs. Right. So, yeah, apparently it's up, and there's, like, beams, and there's, like, hooks or, you know, um, <laughs> eyes in the beams and you hook in right okay but yeah you take your own so yeah i don't know so she takes a mat with her yeah um not a, me a thick mat <laughs> <laughs> she takes a different mat <laughs> like a her. crash mat or a, or a yoga mat a yoga mat right. not matthew iscariot yeah no it's not, <laughs> not escargot it's not going to be protective Mar- if she Mar- falls off then. no yeah so i don't understand so unless they do some stuff on the floor as well i don't know she never mentioned that but unfortunately, sometimes there are women there who That's fart. That's terrible. Oh. <laughs> Mid-swing. Yeah. I've uh, heard yoga farting is a thing. Yeah. It's you, probably natural, no? Yeah, can, when you can talk in yourself. Better out than in. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but she enjoys it. It's like something that she's kept doing. I think she's done it for a couple, maybe just over a year now. Wow. Good stuff. Yeah. I, one at bands I was in, we had a practice room at Oyster Mill. Wow. And they yeah. had, um, we were in the practice room and there were these massive galvanized hooks in the ceiling. And we, and I asked the guy who we, we were renting it off, he was a photographer. He goes, Oh, don't worry about that. That's just when I, um, when we photograph the orgies, the sex parties and stuff. So he was into like BDSM photography <laughs> and stuff. So they would have like these women <laughs> hanging off these hooks. And wow. Getting framed. That, was a, that was a knowing laugh and smile <laughs> from Ben. Like meat hooks, yeah. Well, it was, it was more like an eyelet, like an like a big 
galvanized, right, like yeah. four inch wide, you know, circle. And then, then they would lash their chains <laughs> or whatever <laughs> through the hooks and to tie people up. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What happened to him? Did you ever did you ever get double booked? <laughs> no, uh-huh. fortunately not. No, no. <laughs> No. Right, okay. No, no sex stories, sex party stories, I'm afraid. No male sex parties. No. Right, okay. Interesting story, though. Oh. Monday tomorrow. Monday. It felt weird on Friday. Friday felt like a Saturday to me. Yeah. It's it's weird. Having a bank holiday on a Friday is just weird. Mm. It's the only one, isn't it? Yeah. It's the only one in the year. It just feels like a Saturday. I had to go to, I went to Little, took the boys to Little because I just felt, I said, right, we're going to have to go to Little. You have to do something. We'll just have to get a honey loaf or something. Just go and get a honey loaf, otherwise it won't feel right. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah oh, we just went to the park yesterday. I went to a charity bookshop yesterday. Mm. Well, we did a Little, big shop at Little, mm-hmm. yesterday morning, and then we went to the uh, charity bookshop to drop a load of annuals off. Mm. I picked up a couple. See what I got. Oh God! <laughs> this is going rogue. I only got a couple actually. I've got two. I've read that one. I got uh, a Neil Ferguson. You've heard of him? Historian, uh, commentator, yeah. the Square in the Tower. Not the COVID sex guy. No. No, not uh, <laughs> Professor Poindexter, pineal fuckery, and uh, Giles Pine- Milton. How one man's courage changed the course of history. Something to do with nutmeg. Nathaniel's nutmeg. But I read a really interesting uh, Giles Milton book. Here it is. Uh, I think it was last year I read this Giles Milton book, White Gold. White Gold. It's about the uh, slave trade in North Africa. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the Muslim slave trade. All right. When they were picking people up off Cornwall and whatnot and selling them into slavery. Wow. Yeah. In the Near East. Interesting. It yeah. is a rarely told right. story. Because people think of slavery and think of the transatlantic slave trade automatically. I mean, yeah. But slave trade is ubiquitous throughout humanity. Yeah. Regardless of colour, creed. They didn't give a shit what colour you were. Have you got a strong back? Is that is all they're interested mm. in? That's what your worth is. But uh, yeah, it was, that was a really good, interesting book. It followed like one kid, like a like a ten year old, and he went on his maiden voyage with his uncle, and he got fucking caught by the corsairs, by the Barbary pirates, and then sold sultan. into slavery to the sultan in uh, North <coughs> Africa. It's a fasc- it's a really good story. So I thought, oh, I recognise the name Charles Milton, so I picked his nutmeg book up. <laughs> I'll probably never read it, never get round to it. I've so much shit to get to. Do you reckon like you'll it. ever get through it? No, I don't think so. Well, if I average about maybe 25 or 30 a year, <laughs> and there's what? There's 400 in here. I know. But it's just... to be fair, I've read probably 200, 250 of them. No, 200, say. Say 200. So the thing is, like, I'll go to that bookshop every month, once a month. And like that's that's a, a thin seam. If I only come away with two books, I usually pick up four or five. Yeah, which is three months, three months worth of books, five books. You know. Yeah. So. So you're buying at four times your read rate. It's not the point. It's like I like reading, so I'd rather have more choice than none. No choice. Mm. You know, don't want to see bur- books getting burned. Oh, well, don't see choice reduced. Don't want them burned in a garden incinerator. Definitely yeah. not. No. Pulped in the garden pulper. I know, yeah. Pulper. I think that was that. Is that the one I had before? Oh, uh, you know, Helen, our lady Helen in the Discord, she sent me this one. Ugh. That I just finished the other day. Imagined Communities. Right. And it's like the, uh, it's a uh, history of nationalism. Where does nationalism come from? Mm-mm. Where does the nation state come from? Where does it come from? Well, it's a relatively modern conception, isn't it? Is it? Is it what? Well, yeah, it's 300 years old at the most. Less. Really? Yeah, there was no nation. Is that in America? Well, yeah, a na- I mean, you could say that America was the... First nation. Primo exemplar. 
Yeah, it's it really hard, hard to read. There's like there's paragraphs, there's quotes in French and Spanish, which aren't translated. Holy oh, shit. Sacre yeah. bleu. <laughs> Mon ami. <laughs> Mon dieu. <laughs> what did you do? You use Google Translate? No, I just ignored them. <laughs> there wasn't many. These aren't the important. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't many, but <clears throat> if you go to like the, the front page or the back page, it's some sort of university press. So it's mm. like a professor. Right. Who's written this book, paid by the university. <laughs> it's one of them deals, you know. Sparkling, readable. Densely packed. Sparkling. Peter Worsley, The Guardian. Mm. Yeah. I think it came out in 83 originally. Wow. Yeah. yeah but uh, there's a lot of focus on Southeast Asia and uh, the colonial um, experience there, which I'm not versed in at all. So it, a lot of it went over my head. But, you know, it's kind of interesting, but I felt kind of inadequate reading it. You know, you get the feeling when you're reading a book that there is so much assumed knowledge. Do you know? Uh, yeah, probably. Sometimes, you know, references just go over your head. Constantly. Yeah, yeah Worsley. Uh, Worsley? I don't know. That was sitting on the back. The Guardian guy. From 1983, I imagine that is readable. Yeah. Densely packed. Readable. Yeah. That's what you want from a book. Readable. Words. <laughs> it contains wait, words. Were you up to on the world at war? I've not watched it for a while. I, I think I've moved on um, since I only only would watch that if I have some TV time that's just for me. <laughs> yeah, I don't get any. So I don't really, yeah, I don't really have that. <laughs> we do watch stuff together, but um, if I was to put something on like that, um, Probably what would happen is I would have to listen to uh, short form video clips being played next to me. Over the top of it, and then you can't concentrate. Yeah, and I find it irritating. Thing is, my missus does that when she's watching see <laughs> something she wants to watch. Well, she does put it on mute if we're watching something <laughs> together. So that's why <laughs> that's why that's why I would always opt to watch something together. Oh wow. my god. What is it with these short? Like it's just got my ho- got the hooks in my misses totally. It's the dopamine, isn't it? We know what it is. It's just so so much. We're so saturated in it um, now. Um, it's so easy to get, and that that's what we do. It's the dopamine, isn't it? The feel good. Mm. You, talk- you don't do it. it yeah. Uh, sometimes I get drawn into it, but I de- I deliberately. Put my try to put my phone and my watch up. So like when we, the kids are in bed or from about tea time, I'll deliberately put it somewhere or leave it in my coat pocket. And I don't know, you know, so I can't get it. I have to go and find it in order to do something on it rather than it just being there. So like if I have my phone next to me on the sofa and I'm trying to watch television, I will mindlessly go to it and pick it up. So I throw it across the room, basically, and onto the chair across the room so I can't See, get it. I wonder if blokes are more attracted to long-form things, like long-form YouTube videos, like hour, half an hour, I, hour videos. I don't watch long. So eight minutes right. is probably the crit- critical drinker. Is I have watched longer stuff on YouTube, but not all the time. I don't really watch stuff on no. I do watch some not lots of stuff on YouTube. But that's a, a totally different... See, YouTube only recently in the last two years came up with the YouTube Shorts, which is yeah. the copycat of TikTok, TikTok yeah. Instagram, Reel, Facebook Reels. Yeah. Which is what seems to attract the ladies. <laughs> just the flicking up dogs. I think it attracts everybody. I think you can get sucked into it. Right, okay. I think you can. Yeah. I can lose half an hour, 20 minutes in... YouTube shorts, if I'm that way out, if I'm not. Uh, it depends how I feel, I think, as well. So I'm quite stressed. Is there, Getting that dopamine from that and zoning out to it, it does have a an, a, an impact. Cathartic. Maybe, yeah. I think it just calms you down, doesn't it? Um, but if you've had a shit uh, day or whatever... Just a shit... Yeah, if you just had a shit. If you're having a shit. 
That's when you want to watch them. <laughs> I take my. This is my problem, though. I take my phone. I read read about football when I'm having a poo. <laughs> sometimes maybe God. Sometimes <laughs> maybe shit. <laughs> and maybe you know we will be there. Sometimes I can't pass. Unless Do you not have like phone. a like a, a specific book or two in the in the lever crate? <laughs> I have done that, but. Um, in the past, but no, yeah, my go-to is the phone. Oh, it's nice. supposed to help me relax. What about the germs? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> my youngest son fell in a pile of bird shit uh, today. <laughs> <laughs> a human-sized <laughs> pile of bird shit? Yeah. So, and then I, wow. I had to deal with that. So. Cacao! Cacao! <laughs> okay. Bird person had shot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they're just filthy all the time. And also, you know, <laughs> just, yeah. What was, I'm sure one of them had poo on them. I think it was the younger <laughs> one had poo on him. Oh, yeah, but it's it's just to, the kids. Yeah, yeah, so I just had to, you know, uh, aside from the bird poo incident today, he was devastated. I shouldn't have told him, I said, oh, have you got bird poo? And he, oh, as soon as it came out of my mouth, I thought, what have I said? <laughs> so we had to walk for like 20 minutes with his, he had his hand out like this. <laughs> Sulking because he's got bird shit on his hat. On his oh, hand. No. Oh. <laughs> Wipe it off on the grass. Unclean! Yeah. I am a leper! <laughs> like that. I said, look, there's some grass there. Wipe it. <laughs> it's still there. It's oh, still yellow. Right. It'll be right. Oh, be right yeah. till you get home. Fucking hell. Um, so, yeah. So we washed our hands before we went in the restaurant. Uh-huh. Well, oh, when yes. we got to the restaurant. Oh. Um, and he had his stuff. Yeah. That was nice. That was a nice little so jaunt. True. Yeah, for him. I don't know what we were talking about then. Bird shit. I don't oh, know how you, you got onto bird poo. YouTube reels. Gems, yeah, toilet, toilet phone. Well, yeah, I think Short the, phone. Yeah, yeah, they just, they've, uh, they have employed psychologists and trial and error, and they've boiled it down to this being the most addictive form of social media, these short, instant... <laughs> until something catches your eye it's just nonsense unless it's like one of them industrial presses crushing something <laughs> have you seen the one with the nokia 3210 i've not does it not uh, do it does it start smoking and shit or does it, it break the, the, press? the press the industrial press comes down on the nokia 3210 and it's crunt crunt it's going down 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 and it cuts the camera too and it's hiroshima <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> It's a good video. Good one. Uh, yeah, uh, w- the la- the world was better before social media and smartphones. I'll stand by that. It was better. It's done nothing. It's good for pub quizzes. Yeah, it's done nothing to improve Ruining our lives. Pub quiz, pub quiz. Ruining. Pub it's made everything worse. The political sphere. Twitter. Twitter is just a fucking cesspit. People treat that like it's real. Like, this is what people think. More importantly, politicians do. Yeah. Politicians put weight into Twitter polls and this this bot-controlled nonsense, man. How many retweets? How many likes am I going to get? It's not real life, Grant Shaps. <laughs> Fucking stay off it. You shouldn't even be on it. You should be too busy to be worried about tweeting, you fucking moron. <laughs> but, you know, people just spend... You know, a certain percentage. A lot of lib, lib lot of um, journalists. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something else. Libtards. Lib- a lot of lib job journalists. A lot of media people think that it's really important what's on Twitter. No one in the real world gives a fuck. I mean, yeah. But it like- drives the conversation. It drives the news because all the media fuckers are on Twitter. I know. Yeah. I don't really. I don't think I've ever really paid much attention to Twitter. It's the arsehole. Any of humanity. You the week. <laughs> oh, what was that? Oh, it's probably oh, the, like the computer dying. Don't worry about it. Is the TV going to turn off? No, no, it's fine. But yeah, I, it's like social media is, as far as I'm concerned, it's we were better off before it. Came. I am inclined to agree with that statement. Can, we, can you make a steel manic? Can you make a positive argument for social media? Uh, <sighs> I can't. That's why I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> oh, it's hard. It's yeah, hard to come um, up with. Oh well, it's made it good to it's you know it's good for advertisers. It's good for selling products. Good for the economy. Ugh. You know. Yeah, I, oh. we're just not equipped to deal with it, are we? That's the thing. You're not equipped to to deal with that many people, 
and their opinions and um, you know whether they like you or not, basically. I think that's where it has a big impact on on kids and like adolescents. Mm. It's like uh, you know when you're adult, when you're an adult, hopefully, hopefully you get to a point where you don't give a fuck when anyone cares about you. <laughs> But when you when you're an adolescent, that's the most important thing. Mm. Everyone wants to be the popular kid, don't they? No one mm. wants to be singled out. Mm. No one wants to be unpopular. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's difficult. That's what you know. Social media doesn't help in that regard. Once you get past that, once you're an adult, you don't care anymore. It doesn't matter. You don't have to pay attention to it anymore. <clears throat> no, do I don't. Yeah, I don't really know what it offers beyond communication but you prob you know you could do that with a phone couldn't you or skype do you think people yeah. have the same argument about teletext <laughs> well this is the thing i was thinking that before are you going to just end up being a luddite yeah. get rid of the internet get rid of tv get rid of phones i but don't need to know what the weather's like i can look out of the window <laughs> cast the runes <laughs> you know i would say no there's a distinct argument to make to be made against social media against yeah yeah I don't, I'm just, yeah i'm just it. trying to think what what it you know, is it could you perhaps if you're so inclined could you form a community that you might not be able to form without social media maybe like an element server yeah <laughs> is that social media depends yeah. how you define it as well doesn't it how do you define social media yeah but i suppose even within sort of like if it was Facebook, for example, maybe you, you there's a, there's an argument to say like you could you could find people with certain interests that you wouldn't find, you know, even in your like in your family or your friendship group. And perhaps My that space. you used to be able to do that on the internet, but the internet has shrunk. Mm. So you used to be able to you know you'd be into some wacky video game. And you used to be able to, through search, find an online community that was into that video game. And you could become friends online. But you can't do that anymore. Because when you search for something online, you just get fed the first few hundred results that Google wants to give you. Mm. you you're not going to find Bob's blog about <laughs> Starfield 8. Right. Okay. You're not going to get You're never going to get it, which you would have done 20 years ago. That's a shame, isn't it? I feel eight was a good game. Yes. Bob it's, thought a, so. it's a shrinking internet theory. I've demonstrated it on this podcast live before. We oh, have, yeah, haven't we? we? Yeah. Yeah. You only get 400 search results. Whatever search you put in, you get 400. Mm. And if you put in climate change, you'll get the UN, the United, you know, UNICEF, the WEF, all the usual suspects. You won't find what about if you Crazy in? Joe's climate <laughs> blog, which might have some alternative hypothesis. You're never going to get it. What if you put in You're not going to find it by accident. That's why you point. put climate change denying then <laughs> then you get a lot of articles the guardian unicef this is what climate change denial is you're gonna find crazy bob's climate change denial <laughs> blog that's the point it's not free and open because it's all it's about not, money it's not for open no nope. nice coin that coin it yeah but that's assuming that you use search if you use google search and this is the, the does nobody oh. use bing that's the hope. Well, Bing is like <laughs> robbing Peter to pay Paul, isn't it? Like Might us. be the only one yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> using Alta Vista. No, you need to be using Brave, something like that. Brave, Brave browser. Brave. Brave browser. A browser that doesn't Firefox? throttle your, your, your results. Is Firefox still around? Yeah. Net Navigator. <laughs> Not Scrape Navigator. <laughs> Not Scrape. <laughs> Netscape, was it called? Yeah. <laughs> Remember Netscape? <laughs> Netscape. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do. That's where you've got your bulb patch, isn't it? What are you talking about? Scrape. Hey, it's a nut scraper. It is, isn't it? It's where you use it. Serial nut scraper. It's where the friction is. It's just where I'm rolling my eggs. <laughs> On the base of your scrotum. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. <laughs> I we should take a closer look. Uh, Has anyone uh, anyone seen the uh, trailer for the new Alien movie, Alien Vulcan? No. no? Alien Vul Is it a Star Spocky Trek? <laughs> crossover. <laughs> it's a crossover. It's a crossover. Has it got that babe in from um, the first Enterprise? Enterprise. To Star Paul. Trek. To yeah. Paul. 
Is there a, like a steamy shower scene yeah. where you get to see side boob? Jolene that, Blaylock. Jolene. Yeah. Was that the first Jolene, episode? Jolene. Second episode. Oh, right. So I watched like the first two episodes. I'm hooked. Exactly. So I saw that. I think we're definitely going to get some like, you know, incremental, you know, maybe just a yeah. buttock. On BBC Two at 6 p.m. <laughs> it was Channel 4 actually at 6. <laughs> um, oh my God, you had to pull up with adverts. Yeah. Holy shit. Boy. As it was intended. Oh, yeah, That's well, 45 minute episodes, yeah. 42 minutes on yeah. BBC Two or whatever it was. Um, and yeah, never never happened again, ever, with the, the nakedness. Well, no, obviously. That was risque enough yeah. for BBC Two. It's a shame. <clears throat> we have, Sam, seen the new Civil War trailer. It looks interesting, doesn't it? does it? look very interesting, yeah. What mm. Civil War? Which one? The new one. <laughs> In the new Civil War, yeah. Oh, the one that's happening this year, next year. There's a there's oh, a after film. the election. It's the guy. What's he called? Oh, he's the, he's an author, and he did Ex Machina. J. R. R. Tolkien. <laughs> <laughs> J. K. Crowley. <laughs> Alistair Crowley. Oh, I can't remember his name. He does it. Ex Machina. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, oh, um, he's doing a movie about Alex Garland. Garland. Oh, Garfield, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah. Alex Garland is his name. He's doing a movie about a civil war that's happening next year after yeah. the in election. A, in America. What's going to happen? I think uh, California and Texas break away from the USA. Oh, and if... is this not old? This not, did this not come out like six months ago? No, he's, he's had a lot of press. Right, in the lead up. So I imagine it'll be a left-leaning portrayal. If I had to guess, well, it's coming out of Hollywood, isn't it? So yeah, um, but it looks interesting nonetheless. Um, it's got uh, Pablo Escobar in it. The actor <laughs> yeah. from Narcos. Yeah, he's in it. Okay, yeah, he's a reporter. And what was her name from Spy- the first Spider-Man trilogy films? She had big norks. You do upside down kiss. Blonde. No, I don't know. She in an interview with a vampire. Yes, she was as a, a teenager. That's a ch- yeah. Yeah, I can't remember her name, but yeah, I know what you mean. Her, she's in it as well. She's the right. lead. Okay. Um, and Jesse Pl- Plemons. I don't know who that is. Oh, he. You probably remember him from Breaking Bad. Oh, right. As the not Jesse. Right. He played. That's okay. Yeah, it was, it, it was like a younger part of the meth lab, mm. wasn't he? When they kind of did some kind of deal and he captured them, didn't he, or something? Okay. He captured Jesse. So what? you've seen the trailer of the film? Trailer. It's the trailer when we went to watch Do- Dune. Right. Dune. What, what, <laughs> were you, what were your impressions of the trailer? So that looked good. It's it looked got fine. Planes. Yeah, it was, there was no hint to storyline other than there's been a civil war. Texas and California have broken away from the other states. That was the thing, wasn't it, Ben? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a, an interesting premise. One of those ones where it's, um, oh, that's a bit soon and that's a bit close to the what might happen if all this shit kicks off kind of feeling. It's uh, not <laughs> I mean, we, I mean, we saw this first time with Paul last week. Paul Shatkins, you know, he was talking about the trauma that they had in 2016. Yes, it's like, whoa, yeah, this is like Trump derangement syndrome, isn't it? It was an election, and uh, people just like their brains got fried. That it Have we elected this this monster rapist orange man? <laughs> you know how. Do we not have Liz Trust trauma? Well, <laughs> well, no, no. If you've got a brain in ours your is, fucking head, ours is different, though, isn't it? Ours are like, I suppose you could call Trump a buffoon, couldn't you? Definitely call him a buffoon. Yeah, I suppose that's maybe that's what he should be called, really, isn't it? Rather, and that's well, maybe people, we've got a different mentality around it. Like, no, but people think he's a Nazi. I he's a dictator. Paul's like he's a dictator. He's a fascist. He called him a fascist. Did he? Yeah, he said, you know, our, our regime is, is going to dip into fascism oh. after the election. Right, okay. I was like, do I want to bring up Mussolini's definition of fascism now, Paul? No, I'll leave it. 
I don't think he's a fascist as far as I can No, tell. but you're not living there. Right. Okay. You're not getting fed this diet. The, their media is so much more polarized than ours, the left and right wing. Mm. And the way they talk well, about do, their do candidates is so much different than over here. Do we have a, a, a any right wing? Is it like GB News? <laughs> <laughs> and what's that thing that, what's his name does? Spectator, Daily Mail. No, yeah, I mean TV. Oh, uh, Piers fucking Morgan. arsehole. Yeah, Piers Morgan. Talk TV. Is that what that is? I mean, who watches that? You need your head looking at it if you're watching That's on, that That shit. comes up on YouTube shorts a lot, Fuck his me. interviews. Chris but Williamson was on it, actually. Good, right, okay. That's good. his card marks. Good. I'm not surprised. Uh, you know, Gary was on it, Nerdrotic. Yes, I saw that. And Drinker was on it. It's Previous like, guests. I felt like saying, <laughs> what? <are you?"> <laughs> <laughs> That guy's a piece of shit. Morgan is a cunt. He is. A he deserve, He shouldn't be on the TV. No. He's After that phone hacking shit. Yeah, he should a- be allegedly. Prison, Millie Dowler. Uh, yeah, but he's never been found. I don't care. Oh, he's, he's, a, he's a just a fucking cunt. Well, he, okay. he shouldn't be on the TV. Are you? Are you not? You're not going to libel yourself then? Not that you've libeled yourself. Do I yourself. have to? <laughs> <laughs> can I? Not. Uh, well, you can do. I think he's quite. He's quite. Can I not call him a cunt? That's not libel, is it? No, because he obviously is one. He is uh, litigious, isn't he? For, My the, for the hacking thing, <laughs> he's not going to watch this. Is he? he might do. But that might get our. The point oh. is, is that he's he's an unsavoury character. He you shouldn't appears... be wasting any of your brain space. He appears listening to that so. vacuous, pimping shit house. Yeah, you know, get it out of your head. <laughs> so I was, I was disappointed to see people I think it's there. more maybe they want to use his platform well you know I kind of can understand that but Gary's got a million subs on YouTube probably more than Pierce has it's an echo mm. chamber as well isn't it the Pierce Morgan bubble that's why it's, it's become more polarised like it is over there mm. yeah so, yeah, they do, they do become self repeating yeah. what did um, Nigel call them repeater stations Beep, beep, beep. You'd be, you'd be yeah. a repeater station for the message. Mm. It's no good. It's like, I just I can't stand that Piers Morgan. Get in the sea. <laughs> I don't understand why people watch it. I don't yeah. think many people watch it, do they? I would hope not. But I, I guess some people do. Otherwise, what, how has he still got a platform? You know, after everything he's allegedly done. <clears throat> I don't know. Because he knows where all the skeletons are, doesn't he? Being being the oh. editor of the mirror. Well, yeah. If you're gonna get conspiratorial it about it, or the sun, his editor at the mirror, wasn't he? Right before it got wrapped up. Did no, it, it didn't it, get wrapped up, did was it? it? it was not News at World. That was the one, wasn't it? News, News at the World, World, I think. And I think he worked for the mirror, didn't he? I he just fucking worked for them all. Right. Okay. No, it's a fucking merry merry go round of shit houses. Yeah. Fuck a lot of them. Here, here. Yeah. Fuck them. I guess, is it Murdoch who runs Talk TV? Who owns it? I think he might do. Yeah, it's that Times Radio, one of them. It's the Times Radio, is it? Is that I don't know. He owns the Times, doesn't he? He owns the Times as well. Does he? Murdoch does, yeah, I think. Times. The Times of London? Yeah. Our Times. Mm-hmm. Right. Not the New York Times. No, he owns the New York Post. Isn't New York Times is left, is more left, isn't it? He? he owns the New York Post, right? Which is like the Sun, isn't it? I guess. Yes, yeah, it's more tabloidy. New York Post. Who owns the National Enquirer? You know who owns the Washington Post? Bezos is Bezos. It? Yeah, yeah. He Ooh. wants to be the next media mongol. He bought it out of administration, didn't he? I think it was going to go I think bust. He, I think he bought it out of sympathy. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. He wanted to keep something going in order to, you know. I suppose that's the other thing. When you step back from it, with him running Amazon, you know, you could argue that he bought it in order to generate uh, preferable press, which then would have an impact on government legislation, potentially. Why else would you buy it? Yeah. And three hundred million. I think it was like $300 million, basically, he paid for it, which is, you know... Essentially for the brand. Yeah. I don't think it would have been turning over. It wouldn't have been pro- making a profit, I don't think. No. But he he d- bought the brand for that. He doesn't run Amazon anymore, does he? Step back, honey. He's like a chair or something. I don't know. 
Um, somebody else runs it day to day. He's, he's more into space. interested in cock rockets. <laughs> he <laughs> is, isn't he? Yeah. Have you seen his his new wife? I no. Mean, his new wife or new partner? You What's he called? No, no. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember. She was. I think she was a Girl. news reporter. Yeah. Um, For the Washington Post. No, I don't think so. But yeah, I don't know. I just find it all a bit weird. Yeah, it is. Oh, yes, it's incestuous. Mm. It's like uh, it's a different level. The way these the people operate up there is is totally different from us down in the real world. It's a different network. This is why I'm interested in that Neil Ferguson book. It's all about networks. Right. And he goes back to, like, the Illuminati. He's a historian. And he's like, is it investigating, what's all this Illuminati talk about? Mm. And then he talks about the Rothschilds. And I guess he'll talk about J.P. Morgan as well. The, the networks. Same mm. as the WEF is. It's a network. It's where all these shit houses go. To Davos. There's a chapter called Davos Man. <laughs> we know what it's about. People who go somewhere to suck people off, gain influence, and hopefully influence policy, get a pat on the back, a nice directorship for 20 grand a year, and fuck everyone else. It's like... Social network. Well, they're just wastes of spaces, though, aren't they? They don't produce anything. They don't contribute anything to humanity. They're useless. Useless eaters. It's, that's what's ironic. They call us the useless eaters, the people who keep the trains running, mm. who keep the power on, mm. who keep your fucking... Water running out the taps. We're the useless eaters, but these guys who who swan off to Davos for a bit of skiing and a bit of nose, you know, brown nosing. Some some hookers. Yeah. Oh, th that story comes out every year, doesn't it? Davos, where the the price of hookers goes up. Is it three or four fold? Because mm. uh, all the all these scumbags are turning up in the private jets. Yeah. No, it's 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 a wank stain of a world. It's like you have to separate yourself from it. That's a callback, isn't it, to that porn? I it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's porn? <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's a mess. So, Phil. It doesn't have to be. Um, it doesn't have to be. You teased me earlier. In, you said that your uncle had been uh, doing your family tree. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it, <coughs> it appears that... Um, you're from a line of liars. An imposter. Yeah. Yeah. It's true, that. He's been doing it for about a year, I think. Where's he got back to? 1600s. Wow. Who are you related to? There's various different sort of um, stems right. on the tree. But he, he went down the paternal... Branches. <laughs> uh, sorry. Branches. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the correct term. Uh, the family flower. Oh, but he found nice. someone in the, I think it was the late 17th century or early 18th century, call it 1700, 1710, who was in the Royal Navy. Ooh. Yeah, Irish. In the Royal Navy? Yeah. And Irish. Well, take anyone they get if they're a good sailor. Yeah. And uh, it turns out he landed in New York... I don't know where they were going to send him next, but he said, no, fuck this. So he went north, crossed the border into Canada, found the uh, the Lancashire Regiment were based there. Obviously. So he went and signed up at the Lan Lancashire Regiment. It was called Bishop. Um, <laughs> James, James Bishop. <laughs> From Alien? Is this, an al is this the Alien Lincoln that you teased? <laughs> yeah. So my great, great, great granddad bailed out the Royal Navy in New York, marched north into Canada over the border, found Her Majesty's Lancashire Regiment there, and said, uh, yeah, can I sign up for you? What's your name? Uh, Smith. <laughs> and that's what it's been ever since. Oh, wow. shit. Changed his name like that. From Bishop wow. to Smith. Yeah. Bishop. Wow. So are you going to change your name back then? Uh, maybe I will, mm. To be to be true. Yes. It's just a name. I might you could change it, add to it on the end. Right. Have, a, have a hyphen. Double barrowed. Yeah. Smith Bishop. Bishop Smith. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of double barrel names, to be fair. I don't know why. Is that a personal grudge yeah, or a. What's classist? the opposite of snobbery? <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. It's like a, a working class. A chip on your shoulder? Yes. 
Maybe. Do you want to be more working class than you actually are? Yeah. That's a big thing at the moment, I think. Is it? I say at the moment. (laughs) Why would you want to be working class? Ah, because then you become the salt of the earth and it's all that we're all in it together kind of vibe. Just for the record, I I wouldn't want to be more working class. I, I don't like I don't like Marx's is Marx's is conception of the class system. I'm a Marxist. Um, well, it's a continuum. It's nonsense. Like th- these guys, they want to put you in boxes. You're working class. You're middle class. Wooden you're boxes. Aristocracy. Um, people can start in one class, make a sh- a bad decision, and end up, yeah. you know, working or the opposite way around. You know. And who do you decide where these lines are? Where's the line between working class and middle class in the UK in 2024? Anyone? <sighs> I don't know. Someone will have drawn it. Some statistician. Some some no mark. Where, where, where's he pulled it from? Who, who are you to say who's working class and who's middle class? What? It's like. What's the definition? I mean, if you've got a job, <laughs> you're working. So, <laughs> yeah. a lot of people. So, are working what does first. middle mean then? <laughs> Unemployed? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm middling. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm medium height. It's nonsense. It's, it's nonsense. Weird, it's just it? ways of making you think about other people in a different way. It's divide and conquer. It's the same old trick. I want to be. These people have class. something you don't. Merchant class. Yes. I'd like to be galaxy class. <laughs> <laughs> Constitution class. Like to be mercantile. Mercantile. Okay. You know the thing is people take pride. That's the that's the issue. So people have pride in being working class or upper class. Um, that's the thing. What's I, the what's the first deadly sin? Um I being gluttony. A, aspirational pride. Oh. aspirationally middle class. Aspirationally, Why? aspiration to be middle class, we, we, or to be greater than middle class. <laughs> Are you going to get a badge or something when you get there? Um, Will I it mean so. anything? Uh, yeah. Will it mean anything in 50 years? Maybe. No. Not a job. No one will give a shit. It's meaningless. It's a label. It's nonsense. I'd like to survive on passive income. What's that? Oh, yeah, is, that yeah. up a, is that is that middle class? <laughs> We've just said the, working, cla- the class system is bullshit. Ben, it's nonsense. Keep up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone can have a passive income. You don't yeah. have to be a member of the aristocracy. <laughs> you have you have work oh, putting the name in there, but people who grew up on council estates and have a YouTube channel that creates passive income. You don't have to be middle class or upper class to have a passive income on YouTube. What if you're like an OnlyFans millionaire? Still working, aren't you? Because you're creating the content. Right, so you, you create it once and sell it lots of times, like <laughs> a book, like write a book. So you, you technically, what you're saying is you want to be like landed gentry, <laughs> essentially. So, if, but for the for the modern times, which is a, a passive income through like Amazon VR. What's, 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 <laughs> what's that Amazon thing that you that I got really excited about and never did? Where you just like you look for stuff to sell on Amazon, drop shipping. Oh, dropshipping. I don't know, something like that. For 20 years. There's that one. So you could do that, maybe. That would be passive. Still working, though. That's... No, because you wouldn't be doing the work, would you? So the landed gentry would have people working for them. For them, yeah. And they would not be doing any work. They would just get the money. You'd have a, a virtual assistant in Pyongyang. Exactly, yeah. Work. In North Korea. <laughs> Running your dropshipping company, right? Okay. On Amazon. I don't know. I have some kind of. Uh, made me feel a bit uneasy having a, a, <laughs> a North Korean <laughs> person running. I bet back. they work really hard. Yeah. 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 Value mean, for money. Probably. Yeah. Um, I first just get one from Delhi. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That'd be fine. Colonia Starsol. Yes. <laughs> Um, keep it real um, something like that you know and then maybe then what is it called when it <coughs> is it called a land agent that manages the land farmer no there's a person a cow? 
<laughs> so, like, a farmer has somebody who tells him what to do with the farmland. Like Charlie from Clarkson's Clarkson Farm. farm. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm thinking about. You do, Ted, it's Ted. Yeah. You sort out the drainage in the lower field. So. Yeah. Fast show. Yeah. Yeah, I get, I get the That's reference. Yeah. Just no. <laughs> no, I haven't, I haven't fixed it. No. I, uh. I not even mowed the lawn this year. <laughs> it's been too wet. I know. It never stopped raining. Go on then. I'm out. not sure. Can you just become, you can't become landed gentry, can you? <laughs> We'd have to buy land. Right. Make it earn money and then take the money for not doing anything. Land rent. Yeah. yeah. You have to get some serfs. <laughs> okay, to till the land. Can yeah. we bring back feudalism? Is Serfdom. the question. Yeah. Mm. If they brought back feudalism overnight, where would where would you place yourselves? Where would we place ourselves? Head surf. Yes. Oh, I was thinking here. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of a rank, just a, a location. Phil's already planning to seize the means of production. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll just be well armed. I'm an anarchist. So yeah. Just leave me alone. Leave me. Leave me. I'll protect my own. I'll have my own patch. Mm. Don't encroach on me, or I'll shoot you. What would you do? How would you survive? What would you grow? Potatoes, potatoes, cows, chickens. You grow a cow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, several. Right. Milk them, buggers. What would you do? Have them use the pasture land on the the railway line? Or maybe I'll claim some more. Oh, what would you do? Throw some snails into someone's. Who? Have you ever thought about who owns the land? How far back it goes? How far back? Well, you you paid them. You know, you we've all bought houses. Yeah. Paid a mortgage. Mm -hmm. We bought it off someone, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, where did they get it from? Someone else. Yeah. Someone else. Keep going. Keep going. Where's it come from? Apparently where... Who fucking owned it in the first place? Mm. You know, it was claimed by the crown. Yes. Yeah, they had no Claim right to back. do it. Are you going to farm on the park then? Why not? Maybe we could do it communally. Maybe we'll say, so let's, like, ten houses round us. Tell you what, let's claim this bit. Us ten households, and we'll look after it. We'll take turns... No, you milk one day, I'll milk, I'll milk in 10 days. He can milk on Wednesday. Do you want to go and live in that commune that we talked about Nigel. 18 months ago? You know, I think you'd be a lot happier. I think most people would be a lot happier. I think with that one, I seem to remember, it was like an old manor house and you had to commit <laughs> a certain amount of time a week to yeah. doing stuff around the yeah. garden. I think it was, and the house. was it maybe eight hours a week, something like that. Maybe. It wasn't a lot. I think it was a bit more from memory, but I might be wrong. Okay. And, you, and you had to buy in, didn't you? So, like, if yeah. someone left, you had to buy in. I think it was, it was like cheap as fuck, though. It was 60 nothing. 60 grand, I think, yeah. Okay. I think it was. It was like a. Right. And you got so a it's flat. Your pension, isn't it? Spend your pension, I guess. Maybe. Yeah. But you had to contribute in some way. So, but that could be childcare, you know, if you want. I'd be quite happy looking after children. Yeah, maybe they want a podcast. If we could get an iPad, <laughs> get an iPad. For him. I think, if I remember rightly, there was a long waiting list, though. Oh yeah, yeah. What yeah. does that tell you? Like allotments. It's oversubscribed. Yeah. yeah. Maybe if there was one up here in the northwest, we would get some takers. It'd be interesting if you could get permission. That would be the other thing. Why would you need permission? So I bet you. I bet that you would be permissionized. It'd have by, to be licensed by the government. By the it? twats. Yeah. <laughs> you won't let you live your life on your own terms, will they? Um, no, no. I'm not allowed to wander around naked anymore in the bowling green. No, you're not allowed to have a commute. You could do it again once, I think. Do you think? Yeah. Is that what they said? I think once. Yeah, you got to pick your moment. <laughs> I always think that because my, my garden doesn't really get enough sun to grow things, probably. Right. Um, or just sun your balls? No, oh, I suppose I could do it. In, no, because it goes. It's kind of what is it? How would it be? So the sun comes at the front, and then it goes down at the behind the house. So east facing. Yes, it's east face. What kind? Kind of because it's over here a bit, but it comes round. Northeast facing. Yeah, something like that. Um, so, um, yeah. <laughs> 
I, I need I need a south facing. So I always thought I'd have to go to the park. I'd have the park would have to be my if everyone died except me and my family. I'd have to plant potatoes in the park. If you did that, then obviously the park warden would come and say what the fuck you're doing. But also, how would you protect it from others? How would you protect your claimed land from other people coming in and claiming? So Phil, obviously, is just going to go and put a picket fence around a bit, <laughs> little bit of land. And we might go over and smash it up and say, no, this is ours now. Well, that's the issue with it, isn't it, basically? Yes. So that's where the the common law thing comes in, doesn't it? And then, you know, and who, then who enforces that? I, I am a global citizen. <laughs> that would be an issue, yes. In, in reality, probably, wouldn't it? The outsiders. Yeah. It, not necessarily the council. I mean, if you found yeah. somewhere remote enough and good luck, then you could probably get away with it for a long time. Build a little shack somewhere. A lot of people have done it. There's a, there was a guy... Unibomber. Well, Unibomber did it, didn't he? And, like, Ted almost, Kaczynski. Almost Ted died <laughs> out there. But there was a guy... What did... Did we did we watch the same program about a man who lived in a hut next to a, a lock in Scotland? He built it, I think. <coughs> and, he, and he was like... Mr. Crowley. Oh, no. <laughs> J.K. Crowley. Um, and he, I think he got into like his seventies and his eighties, and he was struggling with like his mobility and stuff. But basically, he had to walk like five hours to the local town. That was the only way for him to get around. But essentially, he'd, li he'd lived there by himself, and then somebody found him by accident, and then made a documentary yeah, about I him. I think I've seen yeah, that. It was Scotland, wasn't it? Highlands yeah. or something. So he like he had a, a nervous breakdown or whatever, however you want to phrase it, and he went right, fuck it, I'm going. And he found this hut and just lived there, basically. A bothy. Yeah, by himself. Um, and then, like, I think eventually it was, like, on someone's land and they found out it was there and they were like, oh, yeah, it's fine. Um, they just let him get on with it. Yeah, basically. Yeah. As long, cause, you know, I don't think he was doing anything bad, really. Um, I think he grew his own food and he fished from memory. Like pick berries and things like that. He had like a lot. He had a stove, um, and he was fine. He was I'd quite, quite like to have someone like that on my land. Yeah, I don't bother Ted. No, he's all right. It's like the Good Life. You remember yeah. the Good Life? We oh, used to watch. We used to watch the repeats. Life. Yes, because I was, guess it came out in the seventies. Yeah, it was a seventies thing. That was Felicity Kendall. Yeah. Uh, who's the Shakespeare actor? <laughs> Brian Connolly. Brolson. <laughs> Brian. Brianson. Don't know. Brinson. Don't know. Yeah. And uh, Margot, who was in the Harry Potter films, called back as the oh, was she? giant woman. Oh, I Hagrid's. Oh, yeah. Hagrid's fancy woman. Oh, right. Margot and uh, the other guy who died. So both the men died. Kenneth. Not Kenneth Branagh. Something like that. But, yeah, that was like... Um, that was the premise, wasn't it, of the show? That they'd sort of ditched... They had, like, the, the posh neighbours... Mm. who were still in the rat race, but they retired early and decided we're going to have sheep and, and whatnot. So it was this fish out of water. Mm. And then the the uh, clashing of civilizations when the neighbours came over and, you know, uh, Felicity Kendall's swilling pig shit mm. and Margot's got her fancy earrings in and whatnot. Mm. Mm. I do oh. fancy the idea of a small holding, though. Yeah. They do come up sometimes, you know, on right move. Right. When I'm wasting, that's probably something. That's a that's instead of on <coughs> short form video clips, I look at short form houses on Right Move. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There you go. That's what I do instead. An inordinate amount of time on Right Move, not really? not moving anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I've I had to delete uh, Auto Trader as well. Auto <laughs> <laughs> <Shit>. Trader. <laughs> that look, it's obsessing that's about you've got cars. such a shit car. I know. <laughs> obsessing about cars <laughs> just just suck it up and buy a skoda and then you won't have to spend your time on auto trader anymore i can't I need to buy a bathroom my first. missus is after a skoda now oh what's she after which one octavia vrs i think it'll be the what's kodiak oh okay, i think kodiak, it might be that yeah. one is it is that a chunky one it's a seven seater suv oh i don't know if it's seven seater would it be the anymore. smaller one 
the Karok. Karok. T-Rock. Karok. Yeah, I the, think it's that one. The T-Rock is the VW. So there's a Karok, oh. and then the smallest, the baby SUV, is the Kamik. My parents have a Karok. Did they? Recently, yeah. What's the Skoda version called of that? Karok. Karok. It's, it's the same. It's, it's, the version, it's a no. VW Tiguan. Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. So right. there's a Tiguan. Which is, is what I've got. Yeah. There's a Tuareg, which is... I don't, it's like a V6 one, isn't it? Yeah, they don't have... I don't think Skoda have a version like that. <sighs> um, I could tell you all about... Seat Skoda. Attacker yeah. is the same car as well. As the Seat Karak. Attacker, same as the Karak and the Tiguan. There's a Terra... Mm, is it a same Terra engine, car? same chassis. Same chassis, same engine, yeah. Same platform, isn't it, basically? But the A VW, VW Phaeton is the same as a Bentley Continental. Wow. <laughs> wow. Do you know uh, a Nissan Cubistar <laughs> is the same as a Renault Kangoo? Is it exactly wow. the same? Yeah. Nissan and Renault as well, because they're yeah. French and Japanese. Japanese. That's interesting. Well, do you not remember yeah, it? the difference is the wiring. Uh, okay. So they, they have shit French wiring in them. The uh, engines are good. Sacre bleu. The engines are Japanese, but the wiring is French and shit, apparently. Right. To my, according to my mechanic. That's why I brought down last time. Wiring fault. <laughs> It's yours, yours is a Nissan, though, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a secret <laughs> Renault. Right, okay. Oh, so it is. Right, okay. Paint me like one of your French fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, stop it, please. You make me sick. I used to, I noticed that. You never noticed that the Honda Civic was the same as a, a Renault 2, not Renault, a Rover 200. Was it? Was it? They had a deal, Honda and Rover. Wow. wow. They were the same car, basically. Because Rover's notoriously shit engine. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Honda, notoriously mm-hmm. excellent engine. Mm. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, no, no but the same chassis, I guess. Different yeah, engine. I think so. I think so. Same shell, maybe. And that was it. God, I remember that MG I had. It was like 1.8 litre, but I think it was a an actually a, like a Rover p100 engine or something bored out to within an inch of its life really thin thin walls it was it broke i really fancy one of those suzuki vans which one's that it's like a fishing van it's like fishing a, a one a, liter what's a fishing van? suzuki carry ah like an old school suzuki carry yeah yes I oh is it like is it got a flat bed no, it's not a flatbed. No, it's it's like a, a van, panel van. Right. It's like, like a transformer. A van, it's yeah. like a Ironhide. I have to look what it is. A Suzuki what? Carry. Carry. 1.3. They liter. do do flatbed. Is it like a Bedford van? Is it that yeah. size? It's a small van. It's, yeah, it's small. <laughs> a tiny thing. Right. Okay. One litre petrol. Wow, one litre. I <laughs> don't go on. A very rare I go on them all the way. Wow, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. So what else? It's going to either be that or a hand cart. <laughs> like my dad used to have. They used to have hand carts. He used to pull the tools on a hand cart. Wow. Madness. Groundhouse. Well, yeah, but where would I keep him? Or oh, her? Just it. Strap your tools to your dog. <laughs> yeah. You'd eat him. <laughs> he <laughs> would fall he? asleep. Oh. He sleeps all day. Sleeps all night. <laughs> it's a lumberjack. <laughs> And he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> he eats the wood. <laughs> Beaver style. Yes. Oh, oh. Really. Shall we uh, call time of yeah. death of this podcast? Yeah. Boop. With a missing Boop. five seconds of intro music. Oh, yeah. Good job you said to click the record button. Yes. I was that drunk? I forgot. Yeah. Who's it? But, you know, good month coming up next month. Yeah. Got uh, one returning guest. Well, yeah, it's a doozy. How many fingers can you see? <laughs> <laughs> Two new guests. We've got um, Esoterica Economics returning guest. It's the three E's. And barn raising next month. A four week mm. month. Powerful. A yeah. four drunk. week month. Fuck Graham Hancock. That's all. Fuck that's Graham it. Hancock. Oh, is he coming back? <laughs> yeah, man. Legend. Wow. So excited. Yeah, yeah. love Steve. Right, should we fuck it off then? Yeah, fuck it. I've had yeah. it. Yeah. Don't call bitch. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even talk about the new Alien film. 
I think we did. No, I wrote it and you changed the subject. Uh, None of you have seen the trailer, have you? No, you haven't seen it. You haven't I'm Vulcan. <laughs> Alien Vulcan. The trailer looks good. It looks like it could be a good alien film. Right, okay. It's a good director as well. Right, you know. Jack Villeneuve. Dennis. Yeah, Jack Villeneuve is the <laughs> F1 driver. Yes. <laughs> Michael Schumacher. <laughs> Schumacher. Right, well, no, obviously not. Him. You can put it on YouTube in a minute, can't you? What? Oh. The trailer. Yeah. Right. Good night. Bye. Good, 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 good. Save Blockland. Bye bye, children. Oh. I am so fucking tired of doing podcasts. We're just doing this for your own good. Oh, uh, you're gay. Oh my god! Are you retarded? What the Farage? Based Sigma Chad. They are, yeah, so amazing in their love. And yeah, sentencing will occur on September the 22nd. Uh, he could yes. get uh, a long time in prison for that. Really? Uh, yeah, like a decade. What? what? Out, out in five, whatever. Because you're not supposed to, you know, it's, no, you're not, but... it's rape. I have total faith in humanity. The other day I was on the bus and an elderly lady gave up a seat for a bearded pregnant man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get to our first, straight away to our first dedication. Dear Chris, please say a big hello to Connie Lingus. One of them said he had family problems. He's, kind of, he's, he's married to his sister. Yeah. Clean yourself up, you dirty little rats. You chicken liver shit, the ultimate puss party. You dirty bitches, you growlers. They're looking at you, growlers. Close your legs. Stop being slashed. Chicken liver shits. Chicken liver shits. What do you expect from slags and, and, and puss pimpers? The slags, what do you expect from slags? We are a bunch of chicken liver shits. Boot your teacher out! A sussy chungus pirate from Basildon. That's it, man. Game over, man. Game over! I am so fucking tired of doing podcasts.